Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hey guys, welcome back to the Command Zone. I am your host, Jimmy Wong, and... I am Josh Lee Kwai. So this week's episode is not the uh, aforementioned promised Gavin Verhey episode. We apologize. Yes, there's some uh, there's some stuff we have to jump through. Basically, we just need to get approval from Wizards and stuff, and everyone's down in Portland this week, so it will be hopefully coming next week. But we did record the episode already. We talked with uh, Gavin, who is was on the panel at Comic-Con. We recorded the episode at Comic-Con. Uh, there's some exciting stuff, news about Cons of Tarkir from the Vault Annihilation, Commander 2015, Yeah, which is why Wizards has to approve it. Yeah, we basically get a nice inside look on the process. And, but, well, you'll find out next week when it drops. But this week instead, we have a very special guest. Introduce yourself. I'm Craig Blanchett. I'm the CEO of Webisodes Network and producer of Top Decking. Ooh, nice. And if you guys don't know, Top Decking is a web series that's about Magic the Gathering. Yeah, if you haven't checked out, you should definitely go check it out right now. Just hit pause and then go there and then come back. And then come back, watch. yeah. Don't watch every episode. That'll take a long time. Just watch a couple and then go back. Yeah. Get a feel for it and then be like, I like this guy, Craig. I think he's done some good but stuff. But I have an awesome podcast to listen to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Webisodesnetwork.com or YouTube Webisodes Network channel. Nice. Is there right. a Twitter account associated with any there of your stuff? There is. It is Webisodesnet or top at Top Decking. Oh. Craig, what is a Top Decking for people that literally have no idea? Top Decking is when you have uh, the top card of your library, you are wishing for that to be the card that you need. Basically, it's when you have no cards in hand or the cards that you have in your hand... You can't play at the time, so you're waiting for that next card to really be able to do something effective in the game. Nice. It's sort of synonymous with like getting lucky yeah. in magic. It's like I it's like I need to draw the perfect card right now. Yeah. And then so you say like when you lose a game and somebody had no cards in their hand and they just drew the perfect card off the top to beat you, you say I got top decked. Got top decked. Yeah. It's like playing uh, poker if you guys play yeah. uh, Texas Hold'em. It's like waiting for the river, waiting for that last card. You it's just like need get, yeah. whatever it need, whatever it is. You're waiting for the turnover. In poker, it. they call it sucking out. Sucking out. Yeah. If well, you get, yeah. He sucked out on me. That means uh, ah. he, he yeah he caught yeah. you with the. Ace of Spades on the river or whatever. Uh, yeah. The difference is you build your own poker deck in Magic the Gathering. So if you top deck something, then it's because you put it in the deck to begin with, right? Yeah, exactly. I wanted to top deck that thing. Why do <laughs> exactly. you think I put it in there? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so today we have a really great episode. We are going to uh, crack a pack butt of conspiracy. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, we're going to wrap up conspiracy really quickly. And then the main topic is we'll be talking about new cards in M15 that are suitable or perhaps not suitable for EDH. There are a lot of cool ones. Definitely. And yeah. a lot of ones that seem cool, but they're not actually cool. <laughs> yeah, so we have Don't a lot to get, we have a lot to get through. Craig here is a resident EDH expert. He's actually the guy who introduced me to the format. You might have heard us talk about Craig, uh, who has the the most best cards in, in our playgroup. Yeah, it's true. Craig, can you tell the story about your motorcycle really quick? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I recently bought a motorcycle. I told a friend that uh, if he sacked up and sold his car, that uh, I'd go out and sell my, uh, I had an Alpha Time Walk. Uh, that I ended up selling to a shop for you know enough money to buy a motorcycle. So That's the dude traded a magic card for, for a motorcycle. motorcycle. <laughs> that is awesome. That's unheard of. Well, I got it when I was uh, when I was young for my birthday. I convinced my mom. I was like, it was on sale at this <laughs> shop, and I was like, Mom, I promise you, it's like an investment. I'll totally like. You know, and it was like a hundred bucks at the time, like hundred twenty bucks or something like that. Yeah. And uh, dude, your mom is awesome. Yeah. I know, right? So you know, <laughs> I tried to convince her that it was like because she understood that uh, you know collectible comics was a thing, and she you know saw you know baseball cards and stuff like that. Her brothers right. collected baseball cards, so you know she talked to the store owner, and he was like, "Yes, it's an investment," and blah blah blah. <laughs> And so she was like, you know, she surprised me with it later for my birthday, but uh, but I was very, very fortunate nice. to uh, have her do that. And then later, you know, have it, you know, more than 10 times its value. So yeah. Wait, so your mom bought you a motorcycle? Oh, yeah, wow. Back in the day. Yeah. My mom would never have bought me a motorcycle. <laughs> She's super thrilled about it now. She's like, right? Craig, I hope she's you're, not worried about I hope you and the motorcycle fast without your helmet. <laughs> sure, she's I hope you're always carrying all your magic Craig, cards exactly. in your backpack. Craig, when you're drive fast, well, take said, chances. Yeah. I, am, I am carrying them downtown when I come down here to play. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do a sweet. crack a pack of conspiracy because we went through all the cards last week. So um, let's see what we I got. Know, Craig, why don't you open it? Yeah, Craig, you, like get you, that, open it. you get that new card smell. Awesome. Yeah, put it right next to the mic so we can hear it open. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that sounds oh. amazing. 
Oh, and the smell is like it's crap. I'm just going to get the secondary sniff oh. out of the pack. It's not as strong as the actual you got cards. You seconds But yeah, you can have uh, triplicate thirds. I don't know what you call it's it. that's all right. I don't, I don't so roll that we, way. Are we drafting Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's just go, let's go through. through um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's just go through. So let's, start, so, let's start the commons. So Enclave Elite. Uh, multi kicker you know, with Island Walk. It's uh, it certainly helped me in a couple games. You know when people are playing blue, uh, since you know it's a multiplayer format, there's a higher chance of that happening. Yeah, um, it's okay. And it's we're right. not first picking it. Yeah, ahead, keep definitely going. not first picking it. All right, stave off. Uh, one white instant target creature gains protection from color of your choice until end of turn. Meh. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> yeah. Battle tricks, no thanks. Vent Sentinel. I mean, if you build around it, it oh, can God, be I want all right. The Vent Sentinel deck. So <laughs> yeah. <bad. laughs> It never happens, but never I just happens. want it. Yeah, you always wish that it was better than it really ended we're not, up being. We're not first picking that, though. Yeah. 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 But that's up there if you if it's like the third pack, fifth pack, and fifth pack. But you've got you know defenders, and you're willing to go that route. Yeah, you know, later on, there's a possibility you might yeah. take it, but you're and not usually taking it you're pack the, one, usually, pack one. Yeah. Flintstone Blade. Ah, yes. Yeah. It's an enchantment. It's a fun pump, but it gives minus one at the same time, so it's limited use. Um, I think it's more a removal, removal spell than yeah. anything, but yeah, we're not. that's not a first pick either. Yeah. Shoreline Ranger, flying, oh, okay. Island Walk. Yeah. yeah, so for six, he's not bad. Um, he's surprisingly he's surprisingly playable, I think. Yeah. The, the fact that blue and white flyers is so powerful in this format, it's it's yeah. worth it for a 3-4 flyer. Even if you don't go blue-white, you right. want flyers. You just need stuff to block the blue-white flyers deck. So. Not yep. to mention you also or have to prevent cycling. other people from having it. Yeah. So far, it's our blue best card, I'd say. Yeah, cycling is also nice, getting to shuffle your deck around. Elvish Aberration. I like this guy a lot, actually, just because I think he has a lot of late game potential with certain kicker cards like Wolf Bar Elemental, um, but also for cycling. But, you know, six for a four or five is not the worst. I always find that guy awkward. Like, I've got six mana. Why do I need ramp? Right. I right. see him, yeah, I see him as being like a better EDH card. There's not too many huge bombs in this. I mean, other than like Rhea or something like that. Where, right. Um, but typically, if you're going white red or white green, you're going with tokens. So, uh, Wake Dancer, Morbid. Okay. I'd say that's one of the stronger black creatures. Uh, at least you get a two for one if, if a creature does die. But that usually requires you to cast something to make something die or, you know, fight something. Um, it's not bad, but it's not first pick. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Copperhorn Scout, one green for a 1-1 one, one <laughs> to untap all the creatures. No I believe we thanks. gave this an F in our set review. Yeah, yeah. I just, you just don't play it. Stasis Cell. Uh, this Good. is actually surprisingly... I don't think it's better than Shoreline Ranger, but... No. It does stuff. I mean, you know, like I, I yeah. once you have enough mana, you can lock down a couple of creatures. Absolutely. Or Vow of Duty. It. I mean, Vow mm -hmm. of Duty is a little bit more powerful than that. But if you're building, again, White Blue is very strong in this. It's a good prevention to keep somebody else's creature at bay. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Alters Reap. Uh, one, yeah. Sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, I'm always impre more impressed with that card than I should be. Yeah. Because you just usually sack a creature that's going to die anyway. Yeah, and here's the thing. You're not really getting a deal out of it, right? You sacrifice a creature, you lose a card, you, spay you pay a card, and you draw two cards. You're sort of it really at just, zero there. Well, you're going to lose. You usually sack a creature you're going to lose anyway, so you basically yeah. get one card you wouldn't have otherwise had. Uh, it it's doesn't still affect, not first pick. It doesn't affect your opponent's board, which is not good for me, you know? I mean, it's just like Divination. Yeah. It's a, you know... It's a draw. Yeah. To your point, though, it is instant speed. I mean, it's n nice if somebody's targeting your stuff to be like, yeah, I sack it anyways and draw two cards. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, uh, here's one. Yeah, Woodbine ah. Elemental. First of the ones that uh, looks really good. That yeah. has, re like, absolutely wrecked in every game that I've played. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a beast. It... It's also in the token colors, mm -hmm. so it's like that's the perfect place for it because it's going to work best when you have a lot of creatures attacking and you know, then it pumps them all. And if you get plus two, plus two, which is, you know, if you're in a pot of four, you're probably going to get, like, odd, odd say you're going to get at least two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, if you've got, like, six squirrels and that guy attacking, like, you're just going to kill somebody. Which yeah. is exactly what's yeah. happened when, yeah. when that guy's usually attacking, is mm. it's, like, those wolves, the, the ones that summon themselves or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. And that guy, it's just, like... And you're, you're giving everybody else's, you know, you're giving everybody else a draw... But at the same time, his power is just too powerful. Right. If you can win with the trample, with the draw, then it doesn't matter. Your opponent could have 20 cards in their hand and no maximum hand size. But if they're dead, they're dead. <laughs> so you win the card advantage there if you're just able to kill someone outright with him. Yeah, he's been an unbelievable bomb every yeah. game that I've played against him. Oh, here's your boy, Jimmy. Here's my boy, Bold War Intimidator. Bold I think Vier. Bold Vier. Bold Vier. Bold Vier Intimidator. I don't know. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah. I just feel like it should. Um, you know... It's it's good late game. I think it has potential, um, but I wouldn't first pick it. So if Jimmy the Red would first pick yeah, that, then right. I wouldn't either. Yeah, exactly. Saliva's so charge. Ah, so Selvala, Selvala's uh, charge. Uh, that card's actually yeah. That card's actually yeah. pretty. I mean, geez, if you ever get like three, three or four or 
God forbid, five elephants from it. Yeah. I think we saw somebody get four the other day. And yep. It's just like 12 Man. power and toughness for, for five. five mana. It's like ridiculous. And they've ridiculous. printed stuff before, like Horn Collar's Chant for eight, one green and seven other, which gives you a four, four, you know, guy with trample. And then they had that other card, that one white, one green, six or four other for six that gave you two, three threes without uh-huh. trample. Yeah. And this for five, you're going to average two. I sometimes get three or four or five. I mean, it's it's unbelievably And powerful. if you can combine it, it later with one of those um, conspiracies that lets you double it up or oh draw a card gosh, or cost one less mana. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. And again, it's yeah, it's in the token colors. Yeah. It's a good card. Doubling up the charge is quite I, nice. Yeah, okay. I think Woodvine's... I would take Woodvine Elemental above it still, yeah, but yeah. it's pickable. Right. Hopefully that uh, Saliva's Charge makes it around. Yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Ah, oh. A rare Vidalcan Orrery, uh, which is a four drop artifact. You may cast non land cards as though they had flash. Um, well, somebody's excited someone, about someone's it. Excited somebody's excited outside, yeah. It. Um, I'll close that window in a second. I, you know, I like Vidalcan Orrery, but not in this format. Not in limited it's, when you're drafting. It's good in a normal, it's good in EDH, I think. Oh, it's uh, definitely great, yeah. Yeah, there's just not the power around it to sort of break it mm-hmm. in, in, uh, in limited. So, and, and think about when you're leaving mana up to cast stuff as though it had flash, right? You're going to be wanting to cast instants, I'd suppose, more than a creature, unless it has, like, enter the battlefield effects. Um, I mean, it can make it scary to attack you right. uh, because they don't know what it is you could be blocking with. So most of the time, if you yeah. have that out, you're just going to sit there, do nothing on your turn, and hope that that's scary enough that people don't attack you, and then if they don't, or if they do, you just flash in your stuff before your turn. Right. I mean... It does stuff. I just think, like, I'd rather have a creature that actually does something in most cases because in most cases, is it way better to, to mm-hmm. do that than to just play a creature on your turn? Like, it's a yeah. little better, but is it way better? And that costs you a whole card. Yeah, a whole card. I didn't get to draft much with that in this in this set, but uh, I don't think they have enough sorceries or anything like that. But it is nice to do just draw go. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, just rely on other people to make the mistakes, and then you capitalize on it that. It does create more decision points, which it's I true. think if you're the better player, then that helps you in some ways. Like, yeah, I think it's it's playable. I just don't think it's it's hard to break it. I yeah. love it in EDH. And, yeah. yeah and it's, in EDH, oh, yeah. you can EDH abuse it. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and plus, that combined with a uh, um, Prophet the Crucifix means you can cast your entire hand. <laughs> Yeah, true. Except for lands. Um, and so, uh, speaking of dogs, if you can hear them barking outside, the, our last card is the Construct, the Cogwork Tracker. Oh, it's yeah. our Draft Matters card? Yeah, it's a 4-4-4. Four, uh, four, four, four. It just attacks whoever drafts it, the person can before I, can you. Can I see that? Yeah. Oh, you pass it to me, man. I have to attack you with it every uh, turn now. Uh, may as well It's not. over for Jimmy. I always, you always write <laughs> somebody's name on this thing, and then you don't put it in your deck, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I don't have to attack anyone with it. It's not in my deck. <laughs> I've never seen that guy played. Yeah, it, me neither. I mean, 4444 is all right. Four, 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 uh, but it doesn't really make a big difference. I think if I think they made it a 5-5, five, five, that right. would be much, much more interesting because then people would have to play it, but they'd have to attack the person that passed yeah. it to them. So it makes it, I think it'd be much more interesting. True, yeah. true. Um, maybe a 5-4. Okay, so we that. narrowed it down, yeah, I think, to... We're at Sil- Silvala's Charge, Shoreline Ranger, and Woodvine Elemental. Um, and Vidalcan Orrery. We'll just put it in there because it's the rare. But yeah. We'll uh, I'm going to take Silvala's Charge because yeah. if this is the first pack, first pick. I'm either going to do this or Shoreline Ranger. Um, I think this, you get more value in a game, multiplayer game. Not to mention the potential to double up later. Uh, going into two colors is tough. Woodvine Elemental isn't good enough for me to go into blue, I mean green white just because of that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I'd rather use it on Savala or Shoreline. In this case, I'll go mono green. What do you think, Craig? I've been taken out too many times by uh, by that white green card. I would definitely <laughs> go. I would definitely go with him. Yeah, I think the only thing I I would go with the with the Woodvine also because I just think the power level is so high on it and it's in the colors. The only argument I could see against it, uh, two things. One is it's a gold card, so people may not take it early, so it m- may wheel. So it depends on how many people you're drafting with. I, I would say if you're in a if you're an eight person full draft, it's never making it around. If you're with four people, there's a chance because it's gold. So and then the blue white flyers deck is just like really really good. It, 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 I mean super, super good. Powerful. So I might even take the shoreline ranger just because that puts me towards the best deck. You know, it just depends on how, like, how and it spiky takes you want to be. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're just going to win, um, you know, that's what a spike is. Somebody that just basically plays to win every time. Yeah. Um, then I could see taking the, the the Shoreline Ranger just because it's also cutting blue. There wasn't any other good blue in this pack. There's no other flyers in this pack. So true. the guy that you're passing to is not going into flyers, which means you can get good flyers in the next pack. I could see taking the Ranger. I, w- I would take the Woodfire now. 
All right. All well, right. That is our cracked pack of conspiracy. Uh, it's a shame that we didn't get to draft with it. But it's okay. It wasn't the best pack in the world, right? Yeah. The right? Falcon yeah, yeah. Get out of here, pack. Bad. Get out of here. All right. So let's move on to wrap up conspiracy. So we talked a lot, a lot about conspiracy last week, Josh. Yeah. So we're going to just wrap up sort of um, what we found works for us, what we like to do. Um, and from there, uh, let's start with blue white flyers. Well, I mean, Craig, first of all, do you, I mean, we didn't talk to you about conspiracy. Oh, right, right. Uh, you know, is there any, like, what are your first impressions of conspiracy? Like, if somebody says, what's conspiracy like? Like, I'm going to draft it tomorrow night. What would you tell them? I'd say it's the most fun uh, drafting magic I've ever had. I mean, it's uh, what kind of this really. This is a guy who had alpha cards, don't forget. So he's yeah. been yeah. doing it for a long time. What about, I mean, is it the, uh, just the multiplayer aspect? Because obviously we're all EDH players, so we, we like that a lot. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a constructed player. Um, I don't do a lot of 60-card decks. I never really got into that. Um, but when a friend of mine told me about Commander, I that is like my style of playing. It's, you know, multi, you know multi-person, so it's a lot of fun with friends. You yeah. can have, like, table talk. Um, and it just, uh, you know, I like the, the no constructs around it. Um, and then the the aspect of conspiracy, where it's like you're you're adding draft to this multiplayer format, just was really appealing to me. Yeah, I agree. That's definitely what appealed to me about it too. So having drafted it a number of times, like, what are your first impressions as far as like power of the format? Like, you know, how how you go about like when I start to open a pack, like, what am I thinking about? What do I want? Like, what card do you want when you open your that first pack? I what think do- it's fairly balanced, but I I do think that blue white flyers is unbelievably powerful in this you know the they don't really have much with reach or flying outside of white and blue and so it makes it hard to to really take out that deck yeah i mean they just got the biggest angels i mean there are demons around Well, just their common stuff i think that's the big thing is like this set is built around like get a lot of one specific common Mm -hmm. so for white it's apex hawks yeah for blue it's crook claw transmuter both are flyers then for green it's gnarled pack. pack yeah. For red it's lizard warrior or maybe lizard like skitter. Sk- li- skitter lizard yeah. or whatever that is. And uh, for black it's like um, what's their quicker quag their kicker ones uh, oh, quag vampire, vampire or, or swamp walk. Yeah, yes. yeah I, I mean the swamp walk. So look at those creatures like which ones do you want? Well you want the two two flyer or the three yeah. one flyer? Like they're just. That right there, they're just miles ahead of their counterparts in the other three colors. Not to mention, they also have like Custody Soulbinders and the other Custody Squire. Custody that's Squire. Flying. Yeah, they just a, got a lot of. A I think they got the one two Vigilant Flyer, whatever that one's called. Yeah. The Screaming Seahawks. Screaming, Screaming Seahawks. Seahawks. You would yeah. think would be like, oh, five mana for a two two Flyer. What? But then the fact that you can get all of them into your hand and then, yeah. Yeah, they draw you cards. And with Conspiracies, you can make them cheaper, you can make them bigger. Yep. You, it, yeah, it's just like they're, they're common. And uncommon like flyers are just miles ahead of yeah. like, yeah. I, I I think the only thing that can keep up with them with a well constructed blue white flyers deck is a token deck. That's the other sort of just run them over on the ground. It's possible because yeah. if you get like two squirrels nest, which you can do, mm-hmm. like that can just literally take over the game. And then the woodbine yeah. and elemental works. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. there's echoing courage. There's tools to sort of make that. Like blow people out of the water, right? Right. Yeah, intangible virtue, exists. intangible virtue, mm-hmm. which yeah. is yeah, super powerful for two, giving yeah. all your tokens plus one plus one in vigilance. That's the other thing that makes the Flyers deck so brutal too is the rousing the spirits, which is like a three mana card that everybody that has parlay and everybody flips over the top card and you have you get as many one one Flyers as yeah. as non lands that people flipped up. And then everybody draws that card, so it draws you more business. You know, even yeah. though it draws everybody else more business too, it's just like. It's sort of well, at that point you you've won right everyone gets a card but you get potentially three flyers and maybe yeah. some people get a land like whoa hold on like that's awesome and that's the thing about the white tokens is that they're spirits they're all flying you know it's great having a three three on the ground that can run but if you're the only guy with flying on the board you're the only one that's not going to be blocked i also think like in a lot of ways like three one one flyers in a multiplayer format is more powerful than a three three flyer and because what happens is people are looking at who they're going to attack mm-hmm. and if you look over and you're like well i'm going to attack that guy and he's going to chump block with his 1-1 flyer. So what I'll have accomplished is I'll have killed a 1-1 flyer, which isn't yeah. appealing to me. Or potentially he's going to block with all three of them and yeah. then kill my dude. Yeah. But it's not appealing to me either way. My dude right. dies or I kill something that doesn't seem to matter. It's a token. Yeah. You know, it's not a card in his deck. Or I look across at this other guy and I can either do three damage to him 
or I can kill the one flyer he's got. Let's say he's got a 2-2 flyer. You know, so all of a sudden, what happened is your three 1-1 one, one flyers actually became more powerful than a 3-3. Three, three. You know, just they added up. The sum was greater than its parts, right? Yeah. So, well, and also with with attacking, too, because now you can, you're can you guaranteed two damage against yeah. that guy with the 1-3-3. Three, three. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. So it's just the tokens are, 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 are powerful, and they fit in the flyers deck also, which is what makes it brutal. Like, here's the best yeah. two decks, but the flyer deck actually gets to use parts of the token deck. Of the deck. token deck, yeah. Yeah, right. which is yeah. like, which is pretty brutal. So... It's yeah, I, I think it's format defining. I think while we're on the subject, like parlay, like changes the format too because you have to think like everyone's just drawing more cards, so you have to construct your deck differently in a format where you're going to get four or five extra cards. Yeah, just free cards throughout from... the course of a game. I mean, everybody else is too, but card advantage sort of matters less because no one like seriously. Have we ended a game where anybody's really top decking? No, almost Not never many, actually. No. Yeah. You're almost at the end of the game and you've got, you know, two, three, four cards in your hand just because we've been able to draw so many more cards. Yeah. Also, like, people hit their land drops because of it. It makes um, playing three colors or... Very possible. Five colors. Because you're just going to draw more cards, so you're going to have a chance to draw into your land, yeah. your extra lands, your, you know, your off-color splashes. And it makes like everybody's more. decks more consistent, which makes it all more fun. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, that's, I think it it's increases a really good mechanic. fun level, which yeah. is what they were looking for, and I think yeah. they've nailed it out of the park with yeah. this one. Yeah, I think it's a great mechanic. I'm just saying, like, it changes how you need to build the deck because you can do things you couldn't do if Parlay didn't exist, yeah. you know, and you don't have to worry about things you might have to if Parlay didn't exist. Like, card advantage is not as huge of a deal. Like, normally, you know, a one-for-one one removal spell is maybe not the greatest thing, but in this format, you're going to draw three or four extra cards throughout the course of the yeah. game, and you're going to have cards in your hand at the end when you die or when everybody else dies. I'd so. still argue that a one for one's not very good because there's three other players. I mean, do mass but at the same time, I mean, you know, if you draft, like, Exploration or something like that, which, you know, has happened in this, mm -hmm. and uh, it makes Exploration much better because, you know, if you draft Exploration or if you draw Exploration late game, you're like, yeah. But if you're mm -hmm. playing with, you know, Parlay, now you have an actual chance to drop two lands per right. turn, which is yeah. very interesting. Yeah, exactly. If you draw that Exploration on turn four, it's still going to be useful to you in some in some way. It's not going to be just totally, like, worthless. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's talk about, you know, there's another deck that uh, I've only played, like, once, and I know you've drafted a few times, Craig, um, the, the Black-White Vote deck. Love it. My favorite. I mean, th what I really love about it is that you can, especially with the drain life effect, what, what was that? Uh, Siphon, Siphon Soul. Siphon yeah. Soul. You know, you can hold on to your Siphon Souls till late in the game, which is an unbelievably powerful card in, in my experience in this game, or in this in this set. And then, you know, you have the extra voting guy, the guy that, uh, you know, when everybody votes against you, they, they lose to The life. Grudge Keeper and yeah. the Broncos representative. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you could get two of those guys out with, you know, a few of those commons where it's like everybody loses four life or sacrifices a creature... I just love that mechanic so much. Yeah. What card do you think makes you go into the black white boat deck? Like if if you it, what card do you crack in the pack that says, "Okay, I'm going to go or at least start to go in this direction?" I really like Brago's representative because it's uncommon, the extra vote. it's white. The extra yeah. vote, extra you amazing. know, adds something because you'll see a lot of the death right keepers or whatever the grudge keepers. The grudge keepers and they later go on in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they typically make it around a few times because people really aren't going with that mechanic. Yeah, and, and they're afraid of pissing everyone off, too. <laughs> Let's not get around. Absolutely. So, you, know, that's, and that's, then, you can use that to your advantage for sure when you're drafting. For sure. And then a lot of the other commons, like the Siphon Soul or the, you know, the uh, Vote for Four Life or, you know, Sacrifice a Creature, or, you know, if you're lucky enough to pick up the, the white uh, instant spell where you exile a permanent that's not yours... Um, there's a lot of interesting things. Or, you know, Magister of Worth, which can be super, super powerful. Oh, yeah. You get that to resolve your way, and you just are the only one with the 4-4 swinging, flying. Uh, yeah. You've won the game. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, just pick everyone off one at a time. Yeah. And then if you save your Siphon Souls for the end, so it's like you get people down, and then you Siphon Soul twice, you right. gain, you know, 12 right. life or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also the Hectic route, which I chose, which is Black-Red. Yeah, so tell us Just, about the black red deck. It's called spontaneous combustion, and uh, <laughs> that card is is awesome. Yeah, it's and incredible. it actually defeats the two decks you're most worried about. Yep, you know it it hoses the flyer and the token deck. The only problem is that it also hoses your own board, and in the multiplayer game, if you're not one on one, you're gonna get hosed because everyone's just gonna turn and look at you and be like, "Who That's killed the thing? everything?" Most of the red creatures die you to that. Everything. Yeah. 
Most of the red creatures die to that. Your black creatures might live. Yeah, only a few creatures live. I mean, ideally, you're going to do that, and on top of it, cast some morbid stuff because it's a three drop. You know, you we can... should say spontaneous combustion is uh, you sack a creature. All right, it's and... a one red black sacrifice creature, and it does three damage to each creature on the board. So you just sack a creature that was yeah. going to die to it anyway. So yeah, exactly. the sack a creature doesn't matter that much. Yeah, it might do it to each player as well, but yeah, you're going to sack a creature that's going to die to the three damage regardless. But yeah, it just hoses all the tokens, all the screaming Seahawks, all that stuff, which is amazing. Well, and that's that's the stuff that red black is most worried about is that is the flyers yeah, and the tokens. Exactly. So. Um and you know, you want to stack that deck also with like your your spiders, your spore cap spiders, your one five with reach. Oh, so you go green also? Yeah. I mean if mm-hmm. it's yeah, you got a little bit in there too. So you mm-hmm. know it's it's got it's it's a powerful combination. There's some stuff in there. I'd say splashing green is a lot of fun. Splash white too, heck. Then you get death reap ritual. Yeah, death reap ritual. I think is, is really underrated. I think it's tough to splash colors in this in in this set, but it's also kind of fun, especially if you started with green with uh, you know a few of the uh, uh, Shakura Sakura Sakura tribe elders. elders. Yeah, yeah. Because um, four or five colors can be uh, pretty crazy too in this, which we've seen from Josh a few yeah. times. Josh That's my favorite. That's my favorite. Uh, yeah. Just get super greedy, draft um, every Value color, draft everything. Yeah. I literally the last time we drafted, I just from the start I said I'm just gonna draft what I think is the best thing and I'll worry about it later like how I and you know there's it is hard to splash stuff but there's stuff I mean and it's weird stuff like the Grixis yeah. Illusionist yep which is the uh, one blue for a one one but you tap it and you turn one of your lands into uh, mm-hmm. whatever land type you, you want you made those to, four uh, fours sure. with conspiracy. I did that have for three <laughs> Muzio's preparations I also picked up uh, so I had three of those and three so they were one mana four fours yeah which is pretty amazing that um, also makes it awesome yeah, but I mean I was going to pick those up anyway because yeah. I just wanted the fixing. Yeah, Sakura Tribe Elder. Um, Spectral Searchlight. Spectral Searchlight yeah. is a good one. It, uh, you've definitely got options, and for the most part, they're pretty good cards that you'd want to put in your deck for the most part. Even that, um, what is it, Mirrodin's Cave or whatever? Uh, uh, yeah, Mirrodin's Core. Mirrodin's Core, which is like serviceable because it's just a slower format because it's multiplayer. So yeah. if you just sit there and, and you know, you're down one mana for a couple of turns and then you start using it, it usually doesn't hurt you too bad. Yeah. Especially um, if you can tap it for other stuff, too, you know? Yeah. And then, so your power level can just be really high because there's a lot of good gold cards. And, you know, in the second and third pack, people aren't taking gold cards that aren't in their colors, so you yeah. just get them all. Like, you get a Woodvine Elemental, and you get, a you know, yeah. that blue-red Marchesa Smuggler that makes everybody unblockable, and you get, you know, and you just get that stuff for free because nobody can play them in their decks because those aren't their two colors. And it's yeah. like, so it packs two and three sort of, can reward you. I mean, it's dangerous. You can if, definitely pick up the value. If the fixing doesn't come, your deck is just you're like... You're hosed, yeah. But like I said, you're not completely as hosed as you would be in a normal draft because with Parlay, you're going to draw a few extra cards. So you can split your mana base in a way that wouldn't normally work because just knowing, hey, I'm going to get four or five extra cards than I would. So that's four or five more chances to draw my third color. So it, worst case scenario, you just cut down to three colors. You do the devil's mana base, which is like, you know, six, six, and five. You know, six islands, six... Uh, six forests and five planes, and, right. and you know that's normally just horribly a, a bad idea. But yeah, you uh, should never have more than three of the. But splash if you're going to draw five extra cards just four. for free throughout the game, you, you know you're gonna you, you have a better chance of like getting all three of your colors. Yeah. Um, so the last thing we'll talk about conspiracy is that we've been actually playing it differently. One of the things that we've done to spice it up is you you can just add a pack to the draft is one of the easiest way of doing it. Um, it, it makes the power level of everyone's deck go up. Everyone's a little happier with their deck. In general, I, I find it's usually more fun, and everyone gets to open one more pack. I mean, we're EDH players, so we're used to, like, huge broken stuff. We're used to, like, infinite combos. We're used to, like, yeah. you know, crazy synergies and whatever. And so, like, three packs may just... It just might feel a little bit not as fun because of what yeah. we're used to. So adding one pack is surprising, like, how much power level it mm-hmm. adds to to everybody's deck, and it can just sort of give it that little extra oomph it needs to sort of, yeah. you know. It'll it's make not, a multiple it's still game fun more with three fun. packs, but it's just like, you're more excited to play your deck when there's four packs. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Instead of like, man, I'm going to do this, these two things, and I really just have to put these three cards in my deck because they're the last three playables I got. Yeah, and it, it's more exciting to play multiplayer with a better deck too. Yeah. Just, you're just going to have more fun, and the games are going to be more intense. Um, We've also done five packs, which is like four conspiracy, and then just like one pack from a random set yeah which, which I, I think is, was the most fun yeah i mean yeah. that was so much fun to add another you know pack from another set because we did theros we did uh, a few like return to ravnica variants and just the the ability for the guild gates and you know especially with the return to ravnica set that mana fixing really made it interesting yeah 
just a lot of really fun cards across all the sets from Nyx and the Theros in the Born of the Gods and all that stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, we, what we what we did is we took like one pack from everything that's in standard right now, mm -hmm. and then each person rolled a dice, and then they just took that pack. And so as we went around the table, everybody had like one random pack from something that's that's in standard right now. Yeah, and uh, and then you know it's fun to just sort of evaluate the cards on the fly. Because you've evaluated those cards for regular draft, but you haven't for multiplayer draft conspiracy with conspiracy. Draft, yeah. And so everything's seen through a different lens. And mm -hmm. you know, that's also a skill. So you get to you get to sort of test your skill against other people's skill at evaluating cards on the fly like that, which is fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, we, the power level is just jacked up. You yeah. add one more pack. And we'd recommend putting that pack second out of the five or third. Uh, you don't really want people to get trapped in their colors and then open up a brand new pack with all this really cool stuff that may have swayed them one way or the other. Yeah, that I kinda, really think second because the purpose. you're still open in the second pack. And yeah, if you open like your Return to Ravnica pack and it's got something awesome, yeah. if that's your fourth pack, you, you might feel like you can't take it because those aren't my colors. And so if it's your second pack, you can you can take it, and that's what you want. You you want to be yep. able to take the awesome card that you that you drafted. So. And it also makes the rest of the draft that much more interesting because you're like, man, those other cards are, you know... With yeah, exactly. Or... Yeah, yeah. I well, can't no, wait to see, like, the rap, the cut cards pop out, you know. Yeah. It's always a pleasant surprise. I would say, too, if you if you go this route, which we recommend giving a shot, like, you have to reevaluate how you draft. So now... You know, there's things that become more powerful when there's more conspiracy packs in play. Mm -hmm. For one, you're going to get more copies of any single common. There's just going to be more of them out there, right? So the the all the conspiracy cards go up in value because, you know, in a yeah. normal three pack draft, like something that gives all of this one common card plus one plus one, well, you're maybe only going to have two. Whereas yeah. if there's you add a whole other pack from everybody, now you're going to average three or maybe four of those. So that conspiracy card that gives that pumps them all right. is actually up in value. So I think the conspiracies, when you're drafting with four packs of, of conspiracy, are like, they all go up into the B plus A range. They're just, they're just all super broken. Like I was taking yeah. those things like first picks over good cards because I'm like, we got three more packs of conspiracy to come and I'm going to get some common near the end of this pack and I'm just going to get five of them. Yeah, right? it's going to make and a It doesn't difference. matter what it is because I'm going to stack 12 conspiracies on top of that. Soccer. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're playing a Vent Sentinel Defender deck too, it, it makes that much more possible because it just, I mean, when you up the chances of getting any cards, it just makes every deck archetype more possible. So the moral of this story is if you haven't tried conspiracy yet, you know, give it a shot. Yeah, There's a lot of different ways to draft it. it. The the booster boxes I've noticed have gone, been going down in price, mm -hmm. which 90 is bucks awesome. Right now. Yeah, ninety bucks for a booster box. Like that's like if you get you and like four of your friends, so five people total. Like that's less than twenty dollars each. Oh you yeah, you can get like seven eight hours of fun out of that. Like easy two drafts. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, it's totally. I mean, and how... you get to keep all those cards. You know, you're gonna. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good EDH cards in there. Uh, it's just I don't know. It feels like good value all around. All right, let's go into M15, guys. Let's talk about this new set. Okay, um, this set looks awesome. There are a lot of cards in here that I think are really great for EDH um, and potentially, you know, very limited in scope, but also good in certain decks. And so we're going to go through what we think about each card. Uh, and so let's start it off. Okay, let's start with the new Ajani. Ajani Steadfast. Steadfast. Yeah. All right, he's a Planeswalker. Obviously, he's uh, four mana. That's three and a white. He comes in with four loyalty. His plus one ability is until end of turn, up to one target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. His minus two ability is put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each planeswalker you control. Super interesting. And then his uh, ultimate, his negative seven, is you get an emblem with if a source would deal damage to you or a planeswalker you control, prevent all but one of that damage. Hey. That's pretty nuts. That ultimate's pretty nuts. That's a pretty it ultimate. Definitely is. Um, um, yeah. Does that work for commander damage? It does, right? It would just do one commander damage to you, right? Yeah, exactly. That's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. And as we'll find out as we go through these cards, it is possible to get Planeswalkers up to their ultimate much more quickly well, than Well, Johnny has will help you do that. Yeah, exactly. Because he can actually put loyalty counters onto Planeswalkers. Has that, Craig, has that ever happened before? I don't think so. I think this is the first set with it's that, and then definitely the, the first the, time uh, Veil vale artic artifact that uh, yeah, that's the first time they've ever done that. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing is uh, doubling season, which obviously with this guy would be amazing. Um, and then I think this guy's really interesting for something that I love, which is infect in EDH. Mm. Oh yeah, um, you know every one of his abilities is just Makes super your fantastic. Bigger. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, you know, give them a first strike and then life link. First strike and infect is one of the best things to give them because then they deal the minus one, minus one counter. Oh, and when they crack back, they're smaller. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, even if they didn't kill them, they exactly. might. Oh, right. that's interesting. So what infect is, for you all that don't know, it's uh, it's another way of winning the game. Uh, instead of damage, you deal uh, damage in the form of poison counters, which are uh, just negative counters. And if you get to 10, you die. Well, that's to a player, yeah. Yeah, and, to a but player. But if, if uh, an infect creature deals damage to another creature, it deals it in the form of negative one negative one counters so yep. if it's a two two it'll deal it'll put two negative one negative one counters on it yeah, yeah. so so that hurts yeah <laughs> so how so how do we judge this planeswalker in edh in general i, I feel like it's plus one ability is a little bit eh. yeah it's, it's until end of turn um for boosting it up though it, it does give you a nice bevy of options to get them closer to seven right you're getting first strike vigilance and lifelink and plus one plus one those are you know all good things of course i just always worried about a planeswalker that comes out and doesn't protect itself in any way because right. you run into these situations where it's like either you have a crappy creature out or none at all and you can't even play the ajani because he doesn't do anything to stop somebody from just instantly killing him. Right. Well, I think there's an argument to be made where if you played him when you if you had enough tokens or creatures in play, his minus ability is enough to possibly save him. Yeah, and That's win true. the game That's true. technically if you put a Johnny out. And but he's not protecting himself directly. He he does right. require right. some things to already be on the board for him. Right. To, to sort of be safely playable at all. I mean, Absolutely. at the same point, Jace the Mind Sculptor doesn't do anything to protect himself either. True, but I'm know. thinking of like um, like an Elspeth creature. Right. You know, she right. just puts three one one tokens. Like, you put her out at any time because she's going to protect herself pretty well. I mean, she doesn't give him flying, right. obviously, but you can't, you know. Well, Johnny's nice because he's, I mean, all, if you think about it, you don't want to put him out early, right? You, you'd you rather put him out. If you're going to use his negative ability, you want to do it when you have a lot of creatures that are out, already out there to get the most value out of him. And he's only a four drop, so it's not that bad to do a little bit, little bit later. So I think that he's actually pretty good because you're not going to put him out until you already have creatures out. He know? seems good in a token deck, and you mentioned doubling season. And then, yeah. you know, if you just drop him as sort of an almost an anthem effect, like you just drop him and you just negative to him right away and then just swing for the fences. And it's like, even if he dies, he did what you wanted him to do. Because yeah. if you have doubling season out, then he just gives plus two, plus two to everything. Well, if he gets right. doubling season out, he also just straight up can ultimate immediately as soon as he lands because he gets eight loyalty counters instead of four because it is a counter being placed on an object. Yeah. I don't know. In a token deck, you might not do that, though. You might sure. rather have plus two, plus Absolutely. two on all your dudes. Well, it gives you that many more options, and now yeah. it's a six, you know, six loyalty counter. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems good in a token deck. Um, in fact, you talked about that seems pretty good. Yeah. Um, aside from that, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if you There's... can't use his negative two ability, and you only want his plus one and his minus seven, then he's lost a bit of value, right? So you're going to want to put him in the deck that can maximize his negative two, I'd say. Because if you do put him out and there's no one to block, you know, block him or whatever. Yeah, I think that's my point. His plus one is like, eh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, on Moving to the on. next one. Yeah, yeah. Avacyn, Guardian Angel. Uh, Avacyn's made a return, this time not as a, uh, a, a god of sorts, but a Guardian Angel, and it fits very well. It's two and three white for a 5-4 legendary creature angel with flying and vigilance. Two abilities on here, one for one and a white. Prevent all damage that will be dealt to another target creature this turn by sources of the colors of your choice. And the second ability is five and two white. Prevent all damage that will be done to target player this turn by sources of the color of your choice. All right. She's so she a, basically gives protection from one color. Yeah. She's a no, walking force. It's ability. only damage, though. Yes, damage. Um, damage that would be dealt uh, by a source of the color. So, so I mean, she won't stop a Doom Blade. No, she won't stop a Doom Blade. She won't stop any outright kill spells. Um, you're really looking for hexproof when it comes to that. But at the same time, she will stop someone killing you with a Prosh deck, just in one turn, right? Just name Red against yourself, and he can no longer Goblin bombard you yeah. to death. I mean, you know. if you've got seven mana up when they do it, yeah, that's the only problem. Yeah, I think she has. Uh, I think she's going to turn out to be a little bit more valuable, not money wise, but uh, card wise as time goes on. But at the same time, it's. You know, she can protect creatures, but her three white to cast her is is an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, especially in EDH where you're typically playing probably three pl or three colors. Even if you're playing two colors, you're, you'd have to be skewed, you know, more heavily white probably to play her. Yeah. Um, just because that way she's a much later play game. Uh, but at the same time, you know, to tap two uh, to save a couple creatures of your, of your own could be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of decks out there, uh, a lot of EDH decks that want... They do this game where they're like building something big and they just are looking for ways to protect it. 
and she's sort of a way to protect stuff. Like mm-hmm. they're almost they almost have to get rid of Avicen before they get rid of of the other thing. Although right. again, it doesn't create it doesn't counter like direct removal spells, but as far as damage is concerned. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good in that sense, but there's a lot of ways around her because, yeah, yeah just like we said, like Doomblade does it. You yeah. know, any any of those type of effects do it. And not to mention there is another card that does her first ability, essentially, but for free, and it's called Mother of Runes. Right. And she can just tap to give someone protection from a color, and she costs one. You know, so mm-hmm. there, there are other Guardian cards out there. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest value here is five for a 5-4 flying. Well, yeah, that's know? what I'm going to say is Guardian Runes is not a 5-4 Vigilant flyer, No, exactly. You know, so this is going to... It's smacking people in the face and while also, it's protecting. Yeah, and also mm-hmm. can't be repeated. This one can be repeated. Which, True. You know, right. Right. I and can see her going in like a good Gisela deck, or you know, the one that uh, puts a demon dragon or or angel. Kalia. Yeah, Kalia. Yeah. Also, like, there's the group hug aspect of it, where it's like I can save somebody else's creature. I can save someone else, like another player. Yeah. You know, so the politics, uh, you know, which we've talked about at length, I think uh, a huge part of EDH, and so being able to leverage that. Um, it's it's definitely a bonus on the card. I mean, yeah. I think it's I think it's usable in a lot of decks. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a pretty strong card in general. Yeah, I think when it hits the table, people are gonna be like, ooh, we yeah, gotta, we gotta yeah. deal with that somehow. Like, not as much as the other Avicen, I think. The other Avicen is borderline <laughs> broken in a lot of situations. This yeah. this feels more difficult to break. Yeah, exactly. All right, next up we got First Response, which is an enchantment for three and a white. At the beginning of each upkeep, if you lost life this last turn, put a 1-1 white soldier creature token onto the battlefield. All right. I mean, this feels like it goes in a token deck. It feels like it does. I just don't know if it's efficient enough because it's relying on a couple of things. It's relying on a multiplayer game that someone's going to attack you and lose life unless you have an ability to make yourself lose life. And then do you want to do it? And do you want to just get a 1-1 one, one for it in multiplayer EDH? Let's say you had, like, Greed, um, and you have, like, uh, what's the Black God's name? The uh... Oh, uh, Can't Gain Life. But also, like, you draw cards and, and lose life, right? right? Right. So it's a Greed effect. He does have a Greed effect, mm-hmm. yeah. What the hell is the, the name of? Erebos. 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 Yeah. So let's say you had Erebos, and you had Greed, and, you know, if you're in black-white. And so now it's, like... I'm going to lose two life, draw a card, make a token. Or Shocklands or Shocklands, yeah. Fetchlands. I mean, I think it's going to see. You want to more... be able. This is each upkeep. Oh, that's right. So it's that's your right. opponent's upkeep, too. So right. if you can hurt yourself during your turn, you'll get During minutes. your turn and your turn and your turn, I can get five dudes out. Absolutely. And I've, you know, I've been playing a lot of token decks recently, and the amount of tokens you can get on the board is huge because typically you're playing a lot of enchantments that, you know, make them bigger. So the more tokens that you can get on the board, even if they're one ones, typically there's ways to super pump them. You know, whether oh, it's yeah. coat of arms mm-hmm. or whatever, and something like Cather's this where Crusade or, right. so many ways. And there, you know, if you're playing lands that deal damage to you, you can deal damage to you on your own turn, and then on other people's turns, either they're attacking you and you're getting a token, or they're seeing that and they're saying, "I don't want to attack that guy." Yeah, that's right. A, that's but here's the thing: as soon as you lose life during your turn, it triggers for everyone because it's lost life. La- oh, unless it means last turn for the person. So if I lose life during my turn and then it's your turn during your upkeep, I get the one one. Then right. if I lose ter- life during your turn during gotcha. Craig's turn, I get the one one. Right. It's just anything it each that has second. each upkeep. I just I really want to look at that card because right. yeah. I can abuse it so, so much. much, depending on yeah. how big the game is. Right? Because right. you can get five tokens for taking five damage, but it's not just getting five tokens; it's getting five tokens in one round of the table. Right? Yeah, exactly. And that even on a in a one-on-one game where this person obviously is going to be attacking you, they're mm-hmm. going to want to deal damage to you. Now at least you're getting something for it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And even if it is a chump locker, it's better than nothing. I think. Really look at that card and how to abuse it. Like, that's a good EDH card. Yeah. 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 Uh, next, we have... I'm losing my... Pistol. Hushwing Griff. Oh, oh so good. Next, we have Hushwing Griff, which we've talked about in the past. Yeah. And... Um, it hoses half your decks. <laughs> uh, I mean, the Turper Orb effect is just crushing in EDH. You know, typically, people are just looking to abuse, enter the battlefield effects. Mm-hmm. The fact that Rune right now is just... Ugh. Yeah. So if you didn't know, Hushwing Griff does two in a white. It's a 2-1 Hippogriff with flash and flying, and he just says creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. It hoses the flick. I hate this card. In fact, everybody out there, like if you pull this in a pack, just rip it up. 
Yeah. Let's no. just have less of them be out there. Oh, Absolutely not. Yeah, I'll take <laughs> one of them. Out. Unless you're playing my Kiki Jiki deck, in which case, get that thing out of here. It's Turp Orb on a stick. You can recur it. You can, you know, much easier than an artifact. It has mm -hmm. flying. It has flash. Like, what more else do you want? Like, the flash part's really mean because they do something and you effectively counter. It's a stifle yeah. on a on a permanent effect. Yeah, yeah on a flying creature. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's a counter ridiculous. that But I mean, it stays on the, the table. Yeah. It's like stifle counters one of these abilities and yep. then it's gone and I can do it. But this one is like, nope, counter that and any of that that you try to do afterwards. And yeah. in a recursion deck. Build your deck around like, it. So if you have a flicker deck out there, this now means that you have to have a card that's a sorcery in an instant or that's not an instant removal. That, be, that removes creatures also. You need to have yeah. a few of those. I you should anyway, right? You should have a path in you, there. And you wouldn't really until until now because you have creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects. You have 187 creatures that are going to do that right, for you. Right. So until now, you wouldn't have had uh, Swords of Plowshares or anything like that. Oh, I always had Swords of Plowshares and Path to Exile are in every white deck I've ever created. It's One of my friends kind of made that a standard is that that needs to be in every deck because there's too many, there's too many bombs that can just straight up kill you one turn. To, to not have a swords. But in your flicker deck, you can flicker your thing and do it, right? So so you get that effect. True. Okay, so you're saying only in the flicker deck would you not run those two cards? I would say there's there's certain decks that have the same answers in a different way, but it's still instant and it's still exiles. Yeah. And so but you can't do that to the Hushwing Griff. It's immune to to triggered uh, abilities. So Yeah, you, you or the Torpor to, Orb, you know. Yeah, exactly. It, so those exist. You already had to have uh, remove an artifact, but it had to be an instant or sorcery or something that wasn't a triggered ability. It could be a tap ability. Right. And now you need one that gets rid of creatures. So now it's like, uh, you need like three or four cards that are just outside of what the deck wants to do. Right. Uh, yeah. But still, yeah. a path is never a bad thing. No, it's not bad. You it's know. just like, it's not as efficient as it 100%. I literally be. have them in every deck that I play yeah. white in. Mm. I think it's just also just cheaper is the the other thing you know it it, it uh, one one cost exile card is is better than you know two to flick or something that's going to come back and do it at the end of turn or you know it it I don't know it no just, it's, it's not better though because in the flicker deck you do you say it's duplicate right you exile that thing then I exile that thing then I exile Swords of Plushard exiled one right, thing. Right. Duplicate now exiled like six things over but the course of But keep in mind that the in person... A yeah, in a flicker deck, yeah. But again, someone can use the swords to exile your flicker thing. But they can counter your Swords of Plushers. I mean, they're going to yeah. be able to have answers to your stuff. But whatever that is, I want my stuff to have the chance to just keep doing it. I totally agree that in those instances where you do have those two or three cards that combo off together, those are great. But the, the one thing about Swords of Plushers is it's a one-card answer where it's like... You draw this, you know that you can use it at any time. You're not relying on Rune plus this other guy to do this effect. It's true, but when you build a deck like the Flicker deck, the entire point of it is to get that mechanic going. If you don't, you're losing anyway. Absolutely. And like if point, I don't you have, are playing blue too, so you yeah, can be like, If hey, I don't have that. my Flickers going, I'm not winning that game. Right. So it doesn't matter. Right. Like if my if I need swords or this thing, like if swords is the, you know is what I have to do because my flicker's not on, then the sword isn't, sa isn't saving me to win that game. Like, my flicker's not working. The whole deck's off. Right. So, yeah, but now, it's, well, it's moot point. You need Swords of Plowshares or Path to Exile because, you know, you can't you can't take care of Hushwing Griff with Well, the finally, flicker the stuff. flicker deck needs an answer. Can you tell I don't like that card? <laughs> anyway, the next card uh, that I actually don't like too much is called Mass Calcify, which is five and two white. It's a sorcery, and it just says destroy all non-white creatures. This is... Yeah, it's getting into cyclonic rift territory. It's yeah. not quite there. Um, I just, yeah, I wish they wouldn't do these targeted wrath effects. They're too powerful in EDH. They're too much ability for you to have stuff left and then nobody else to have stuff left after wrath, which is like insta win in a lot of EDH. Yeah, you know, and it just sucks when somebody pulls out like an insta win card. Like cyclonic rift, like you, you have to play it in basically every blue deck because it's insta win. It just is. It's like everybody's Cyclonic stuff goes away except yours. Unbelievable. The fact that it's an instant, you know, and it's a remove, you know, ex remove everything. Everybody's yeah, hands or other stuff. Back your hand, yeah. This I think is great and terrible at the same time. It's I think it, you know, you do get rid of a lot of other people's stuff, but in an EDH game, there's a lot of people playing white and you're probably going to, you know, take care of the guy who's playing, you know, black blue or something like that and really ruin his day, but you're probably not going to ruin everybody else's day on the table. And I think for a seven cost sorcery, I think it should be more powerful, to be honest. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I just I feel like even if it's you and one guy that are fine, 
you just literally destroyed two out of the three players that are you're playing against. I'm positive that now after saying that, I'm just going to be destroyed by that card every time it's played. <laughs> yeah, you're it's just, eat your I mean, words up. Like even if one other player is playing white or two, it's still gonna it's still gonna mess them up. I mean, especially if you build your deck around this card, which don't do it. It's just one card. But yeah. I don't know. I just don't like the I don't like these effects. That's like I get to seven mana and I just have a chance to just win with this card because it just literally destroys everybody else. Yeah. 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 Does it now? Forgive my ignorance, but does that like let's say Rafik, which is three colors, would that destroy Rafik? Rafik's got white in his casting cost. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. No, because he's partially white. Yeah. So, so yeah. I think it's you know, I don't know. I would I'd go with a Wrath over that, a Wrath of God, or like a Day of Judgment or something like that. Depends on your play group. That's yeah. really what it comes down to. I mean, if I'm playing white, I'm, I want that card in my deck. I mean, it's never going to hurt me more than it is anybody else. Like it's, right. it's always going to hurt everybody else more than me. I mean, there might be one or two players where it hurts them a little less, but in the end, like, there's a good chance that it just absolutely destroys every... You know, yeah. there's a decent chance it destroys everybody and leaves me with two or three creatures, too. Like, right. I think they're tr also trying to do a lot of, like, monocolored stuff in this set, which yeah, I think they, there's they somewhat of a theme are. with that. With, yeah, they definitely you know. are. Yeah. All right, our next card is Midnight Guard, which is two and a white human, creature, human, soldier. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, untap Midnight Guard. Hey, all right, untap abilities for any time another creature enters the battlefield. So keep in mind, for multiplayer, this is going to happen much more uh, than not. I, I, I mark this card because cards with this type of effect have huge possibility for going infinite, and I can already mm -hmm. think of a bunch uh, here, which is like token creators, uh, and, and you put some sort of effect on him that like untaps lands, and right. then you create more tokens with those lands, or even and then just he having taps, you... and then... Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, Even just having him ping someone, you know, for one damage each time. Yeah, but I mean, you can create an infinite combo where you can create a creature that comes into play, and by untapping him, he actually creates another creature that comes into play. Absolutely. Like Splinter Twin right. uh, would do that. Think of Splinter Twin with this, and then right. tap it, make a copy of him, that untaps him, do it again. Hi, I make a million copies yeah. of him, and I kill everybody. I think he's made to be broken, which is why he's a forecast for a 2-2, two, two, that he's half of a piece of some puzzle. He's only 3 three for a 2-3. Three. Three, yeah. Three, yeah. Oh, which is actually a pretty yeah. nuts. Okay, so this is, like this card can be broken in EDH. Mm -hmm. uh, a yeah. lot of infinite combos you can do with it. So I would say, like, if you've got it, there's a lot of decks out there that are already doing stuff like this, and this guy will just slot right in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this type of effect is super powerful. So you know, play with it, make, break it, and then you know, kill all the people in the play group. Exactly. And then blame it on Jimmy. Blame. Oh, you should always blame it on me. Uh, <laughs> at least blame it on this podcast. Uh, that way, we get more people to listen to it. All right. Well, our next card is Preeminent Captain. I can keep reading these if you guys like, or you guys can take it on to Craig. Maybe you want to read this guy. No, thank you. <laughs> all right, Craig has said he's I'll vetoed read it. it. Okay. I'll read it. Right. Preeminent Captain. It's a two-two for tuna white. It's a Kithkin soldier. It has first strike, and it says, whenever preeminent captain attacks, you may put a soldier creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. A very powerful effect. We know because yeah. of Kalia and it's a, a lot Kalia. of stuff like this. It's a Kithkin Kalia. It's a Kith Kalia. I <laughs> love how they brought back Kithkins in this. You know, they, they had them in Lorwyn, and it was one of my favorite, uh, you know, ways to go when drafting Lorwyn. Uh, which yeah, I cool did tribe. way after the pack or after the set was released, but at the same time did get the chance to draft that at one point. And nice. Kithkins just seems really, really fun. You know, they also brought him back in Modern Masters and whatnot. And I think there's something to be said for you know, is he a rare? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's something to be said for you know, possibly Popper coming back. You know, as uh, you know, in a Popper EDH deck or something like that. If he what, stays what is that low for those that don't know, it's there's two ways of thinking about it from from what I've seen is. Typically, doing an EDH deck of uncommons or lower, mm -hmm. you know, uncommons or so commons. So no rares or mythics. Right, leaving rares and mythics out of it. And the other way that I've seen it is all cards have to be under one dollar. Nice, nice, yeah. definitely possible. Pop, popper is a really fun way to go, uh, and it keeps your budget low, and it stops that arms race that can happen in the mm -hmm. play group, where like one dude's just willing to spend a lot more money than everybody else, which, you know, over the long run makes it. Yeah, tough. Not, yeah makes tough. it not yeah. as fun for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. and it also you get to play those cards where you're always like, man. I like you, when you cut those cards from your deck where you're like, oh, this one's you know a little bit more powerful. I have to like pull something out, and it, it lets you play those cards that uh, you know may not have made the final cut in your more powerful EDH decks. Mm -hmm. but. Definitely for the Timmy within us too, you can pull off some really weird, crazy stuff for sure. <laughs> yeah. So the captain himself, I, I just 
this is another guy I just wanted to keep an eye on because this effect in general is super powerful. Like cheating cards directly into play. Attacking. Oh, always powerful. Yeah, and there's a lot of soldiers out there. I mean, there's a ton of them. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is a guy I think can be, um, he can be broken in EDH. Yeah, I think so too. He can, he can get things going in the same way that Kalia can, uh, but there are a lot of great soldiers out there. Yeah, I've seen white-red soldiers be made pretty strong before. Yeah. Either way. Next up, we got Resolute Archangel with a 5 and 2 white, total for 7 casting costs for a 4-4 four, four flying. And when Resolute Archangel enters the battlefield, if your life total is less than your starting life total, it becomes equal to your starting life total. Yeah. Hello. Bleep you, Josh, and your stupid blinking decks. Yeah, you will you will <laughs> blink the crap out of this. Flickering yeah. this is brutal. Yeah, it's like... What does this do with commander damage? Nothing, right? Nothing, yeah. Commander damage will still take you out. And right. a lot of, I mean, a lot of decks can, can Is resolve. it my starting life total? Like, I haven't taken any commander damage? No, yeah, yeah right. And hence why I love Infect. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter how many, because poison... Can, exactly. Can still kill me. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, though. At, at the end of the day, a lot of EDH decks will still kill you in one turn if you have 40 life or 20 life. <laughs> true. It's true. I don't think it's a. Um, it's just to save you from everything card. Yeah. I just think like flicker is oh, what I was thinking goodness. of. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know, it's just a way to like you have to kill me in one of those other ways. And it's mm -hmm. clearly a late. You know, it's a late game card. It's a. It's on a stick, so it's a flying angel four four, right? Right. Yeah. For what seven? Yeah. So, so really, you pay two extra mana and you just get your life total reset. It's yeah. crazy. And then you can with, go from one to 40. That's and insane. there are so many blink effects these days, you know, even with like cloud shift, you yeah. know, yeah. one white mana and you're just like, bloop, I'm back up to 40 again. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to be powerful. She is going to be very powerful. Sorry. Yeah. She's one to watch. She is one to watch. And that sort of, how do we know? Is pretty sweet no, no, too. No, how do we know that's a she? She's that's got hair and boobs. All right. She's got boobs. Fine. Yeah, there you go. Boobs don't um, make and and usually, a uh, usually a lot more angels in Magic are female rather than male. I can't think of actually very many male uh, angels. So think we about. think. So we think. All right, next up, Soul of Theros. You want to read this one, Josh? Sure. This is another cycle. There's a cycle of mythic rares. Uh, each color and an artifact uh, has one of these. Uh, so whites is called Soul of Theros. It's a six mana, four and two white for a six, six avatar with vigilance. It has two abilities. One is pay four and two white. And creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain first strike and life link until end of turn. And then the second ability is the same casting cost, four and two white. And it says, exile soul of Theros from your graveyard. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain first strike and life link until end of turn. So all these soul ofs, mm -hmm. this whole cycle, th this is what they do. They have an ability... And then that ability also works if they're in your graveyard. You exile them and you yeah. get that ability. You can once. play it for, for like a, a flashback cost kind of. Yes, you know? exactly. Uh, that's a that's a really good uh, uh, analogy. Yeah. So uh, this again just screams tokens, right, Craig? This tokens or slivers. You know, there's uh, mm -hmm. they they apparently are making slivers a thing, and slivers would definitely work with this. But tokens are you know six six for a six vigilance. Uh, or six for a six six vigilance, which then has extra abilities to give your other guys and itself plus two plus two, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Creatures you control. Creatures you control. And you know, theoretically, you could do it twice if you had twelve mana. Yeah. Oh yeah, my absolutely. goodness. Absolutely. So you know, you're attacking with you know an eight eight wall basically with everything else being huge. Could be really interesting. Yeah. Um, and especially if it's lifelink across like well, let's say fifteen tokens, and they're all three threes, you're just gonna gain forty five life in one swing if you oh, go that's with everyone. Right, it's lifelink too. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's better than it looks again on first glance. You know, I think though, I wanted to talk about all these because they're mythics, and 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 normally, like, what do you do when a new set comes out and you're thinking EDH? You just go straight to the mythics because mm -hmm. those are the sort of really powerful, big, splashy stuff that you think is gonna work in EDH. But you know, this seems expensive to me for what you get. You know, a six six creature. Eh, in EDH, it's okay, you know, and then you have to pay six mana to get plus two, plus two, first strike yeah. and lifelink to all your stuff. It would work in a token deck mostly, again, because plus two, plus two for all your creatures is relevant there, but it's just a lot of mana. You can get that effect for less. Mm -hmm. So coat, life coat of link, arms. Yeah, coat yeah. of arms is five, and it's going to give them way more than plus two, plus two. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but that's going to make your token. But at like, the same time, this is also giving them first strike and uh, lifelink, right? So yeah. if they do block, the first strike is, you know, they're probably going to... But you're never attacking in a token deck in a situation where you care if they block or not. Right. You know? Yeah. And then lifelink... Okay, lifelink's okay, but as we've just said, like, with Infect, with commander damage, you know, that lifelink is just not as relevant. Like, I don't think this is a bad card. I just don't think this belongs in 
like you know a lot of yeah, a lot of decks. I agree. Like, it's I, a very personally, specific like, I don't my think token deck, it's not. It won't even go. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. think it's top tier uh, for an EDH deck, but this will definitely be a standard bomb, or not a standard bomb, but a, like a limited bomb. Oh where, yes, this will uh, end oh, the game. If you're drafting or playing sealed, like yeah, yeah this is definitely this going to the deck. Yeah, yeah, this is called the yeah. I win card yeah. straight up. But for EDH, I just you know we have to talk yeah. about it. It's a mythic. It's a type of card that people are going to want to put into their decks, and you know I'm not saying that depending on what cards you have it might be good but yeah this card like but, i don't think it's tier it's tier one for i don't ADH. think it's tier one but also you know its second ability to exile it from the graveyard is actually relevant with this card because in a token deck sometimes you're discarding cards sometimes you know sometimes your opponents are forcing you to discard cards and the ability to kind of flash this back from your graveyard for a you know a swing for the win is something that I think could happen. Sometimes you do right. have like ten tokens on the on the ground. And you're like, Shh, man, if I just had you know plus one plus one or plus two plus yeah, two. That's yeah, that's true. It also saves you from a nice toxic deluge, which would give them all minus yep. something. You know, and if they they're like, oh, let's do minus this, you'd be like, oh, ha, all my guys survive. You know, so mm-hmm. so it is a nice rescue spell. But yeah, you know, it's uh, all of the soul cards being able to be exiled from their graveyard is great. There's just a couple that I think... There's one, really, that I think is really the true EDH bomb, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, next we've got... Oh, your turn, Jimmy. Oh, my turn? Excellent. Craig, you want to take a turn? Nope. Okay. Spectral Ward. <laughs> it's uh, three and two white, Enchantment Aura. This card, I'm just going to say, is going to look sick as a foil. I mean, look at that. It's got yeah, rainbows it going through it. Um, that doesn't really affect how good the card is. Uh, it says Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from all colors. This effect doesn't remove auras. So it means it can't be blocked, targeted, or dealt damage by anything that's any of the colors. So when it, it says, doesn't remove auras, but it yeah. would prevent you from casting any further auras. Further correct? auras, right. Yeah. This is something you want to pile on top of all the other sweet things you put on this creature. Yeah, we debated about this for a long time before the podcast started about whether it was good or not. And I think the ending was that, yeah, it's kind of good. You know, there's stuff that might be better, but at the same time, in certain decks like, you know, Rafik or. Um, Gisela, you know, um, Kalia, Kalia, Kalia. Yeah. Jaleva, anything that's sort of Voltroning, as we say. So Voltron yeah. is when Jaleva can't play this though because he's white. Oh, correct. Uh, Voltron is when you are like building one super creature. Uh, so you're sort of like putting equipment on it. You're enchanting it. You're using other creatures to add their abilities to it. You know, Voltron decks are usually doing that to their commander. Not always, but um, they want to you know, make that one creature as unstoppable as possible. And usually yeah. they're playing things like Whisper Silk Cloak, which gives it Shroud and Unblockable, and they're just going to get there with one huge monster creature. Yep. And in that type of deck, like, you want as many effects that simultaneously protect your creature and make it unblockable as possible, and this does both. Yeah, and buffs it up. Yeah. For plus two, plus two. And the, the only thing that could really block it is, say, artifact creatures or whatever. But to, to your point, like someone like Earl, who can, you know, bring this out from nowhere and, uh, you know, then use them to protect mm-hmm. himself as well as protect himself against other creatures. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, and that deck, that this, this Spectre Ward is, is, is pretty awesome. Actually. Yeah, prob- probably yeah. Uh, something that should go in Earl. Yeah. yeah. This is going to go, I think, in most of those Voltron decks because in those decks, you just want as many effects as you can that, that do this. And and really, there's not very many that protect your creature from removal, protect it from other creatures, and buff it. Yeah. Yeah. Whisper I will Silk say this if I'm the only one. Close. Five is a bit high yeah, for the casting it is. cost. Yeah, it I is. think it probably should be a four, but it, it should be a four and a half, so I understand why they put it at five. Yeah, there you go. Well, and in EDH, like we're just not generally as worried about the casting costs. Like, you know, yeah. unless it's like 11, you know, five is like, you're not even going to play this always on turn five. A lot of times you're going to hold it in your hand till the right moment. Right. You mm-hmm. know, it might See, be the, seven or eight. The fact that this guy's five though, would make me like mentally, I'd be like, I'm definitely going to cheat that out. There's no way that I'm going to cast that. I'm going to be like, I'm going to Academy Rector that. Into yeah. Play here. Like, it right. does make it really hard to play a, the creature and then play this on it in the same turn, which is really what you want to do, which is why I think, like, in general, like, equipment is a lot better. Yeah, because Swift for Boots sort of for one. Pay, you're in an installment plan on right. equipment. Like, you're paying to put it out, and then the rest of the casting cost it's a is a good to, comparison. Yeah, it's on layaway, and then you equip it, so that's the next part of, you know, the yeah. layaway. So the enchantments, you can't do that. That makes it a little weaker. I just still think in a lot of those decks, like, you just want as many of those effects as you can get, and, and that's one of them, so... So, All right, so moving on to blue here. 
What do we got? What do we got? We got the... Oh, I like this one. This is the Chasm Skulker. It's uh, three mana. That's two and a blue for a 1-1 Squid Horror. It says, whenever you draw a card, put a 1-1 counter on Chasm Skulker. And it gets better. When Chasm Skulker dies, put X 1-1 blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk onto the battlefield, where X is the number of 1-1 counters on Chasm Skulker. Yeah, that's that's incredible. This card seems nuts to me. Uh, yeah, it's called, um, let's see, what is it called? It's called more than a 2-for-1. This could be like a 6-for-1 when he dies. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, even if you don't, first of all, you're in blue. You're going to have a lot of like card, card drawing draw. effects. But even if you don't, if you just put him out on turn 3 by turn like 5 or 6... You know, just modestly, he's a 5-5 five, five or 6-6. Six, six. Mm -hmm. Somebody board wraps, you get five one ones. Yeah. I mean, that's just for free. That's it's amazing. I, I love the flavor of this card. This guy has so many options to him, and I think he's one of yeah. the cards that was created by one of the other gamers that they... Uh, that they did they did a set of uh, that's right it's designed by mike newman by yeah which they did a set of about i think 15, 15 cards yep. uh for this set that uh were designed by uh people who have designed other games so you know one of them was designed by the guy who created minecraft notch and, um and, yeah. and Penny a few Arcade did one yeah so it's a super cool card i think it's gonna be like bonkers in edh yeah and, immediately this is an auto include in marchesa for sure of uh, course yeah. this is it gets one one counters and, it comes and then back it dies and makes all the counters it. and does it get oh my lord yeah and then you get yeah to add tokens to blue is uh is a really interesting thing and then to have them have island walk as well would be looks yeah. fun lots of blue in edh oh in yeah general. and i think island is like the most common because EDH encompasses all of Magic from the vintage cards. And for the first four years of Magic, let's say, like blue was far and away the best color, um, the most powerful color. Like you'll notice like early on in Magic, blue just kind of can do everything. It can do direct damage. I mean, it, can, yep. it has crazy stuff. And so take extra turns from the yeah. beginning. So blue is the most likely that that, that Island Walk is going to like, you know, there's going to be more blue on the yeah. table generally than most other colors. Definitely. So, uh, pretty cool card. Yeah. Next up, oh, we got... We got a new Jace, everybody. Jace, the Living Guild Pact with amazing art. His left hand is on just white fire, I guess. He's a Planeswalker. He comes in for two and two blue for, with five loyalty points. His first ability, plus one. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them in your graveyard. Hmm. His second ability, minus three. Return another target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Okay. And his third ability, negative eight. Each player shuffles his or her hand and graveyard into his or her library. You draw seven cards. Hmm. Hmm. So not the strongest, Jace. He doesn't feel very strong in EDH. The first ability, yep. you don't even draw a card. You you, you, you just, just select one of two. And you don't even scry it. You just toss it in your graveyard. So the the ability, it's even more limited, and, and you need to build around that if you really want to make that effective, you know? It would have to go in a deck that wants stuff in the graveyard, I guess. Otherwise, yeah. I, I don't know. The second ability just seems really expensive. It's minus negative three. three. No way. Yeah, so you can do it minus once. Two, yeah. And it basically boomerangs a non-land. Right. Um, you want to make the chase good, make it minus one. I mean, it, it, I'm just not really astounded by it. Even the ultimate ability, when you read it, it sounds really good. But then you think of it in terms of EDH. So what you do is everybody shuffles their graveyard in their hand into their library. You draw seven cards. Most ultimate abilities feel like, hey, I'm going to win the win game. Win the game, yeah. This is like, I've got seven cards. Nobody else has cards. But if I'm facing three other players... Trust me, they're all going to try and kill you now because you just yeah. made them lose their whole hand. Nobody likes that. And they still get to each draw a card a turn, so they're going to catch up to you in like two turns. Yeah, exactly. You know, combined. So, I mean, it's good, but... It's just so... If you get to ultimate, you don't so even just win. Yeah, you should... If you're at that point, I would much rather have so many other Planeswalkers, you know, yeah, kicking I, butt for me at that point, I at just, ultimate level. I just don't feel like this guy is getting there for EDH. I mean, yeah. he's not horrible. If you if you get him, like you can put him in some stuff, but he's not... I don't know. I can't think of what kind of deck this really wants yeah. this guy. Do you have a favorite Jace outside of the obvious Jace the Mind Sculptor? Probably the first one. I mean, he seems to be, for me, the one that I've used the most. You know, make everybody else draw a card or you draw a card. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a low casting cost, which is interesting to me because especially in blue. Uh, but I don't know. The only one that I usually play is... Uh, JTMS, yeah, yeah, JTMS, the biggie, the baddie, yeah. the the best planeswalker I of all time. I him, but he's a hundred dollars, and I don't have yep, one. Yep, exactly. So maybe any of the other That's Jaces the are your. That's the one I'd play too. They're your popper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this Jace does not make it down to our EDH playlists again. Sorry, Jace. Maybe next time. All right. The next card is Jalira, Master Polymorphist. She is a two-two for three and a blue, a legendary creature, human wizard. 
You pay two and a blue and tap her. Sacrifice another creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. I think that's pretty amazing. You could build an EDH deck around this that just has just bombs and tokens. But they can't be legendary cards. That's right. But there are plenty of huge creatures that aren't legendary, right? We've got some big stuff out there. Yeah, there's lots of I mean, Palaka Worm type mm-hmm. stuff that's good and big. Yeah. There's trample or flying or whatever. The I'm, biggest problem I see with this is that it's in blue. I mean, it would be like yeah. unbelievable at any other color. I think blue is the hardest for it to actually work properly, but then again, mixed in with the right deck, I, I agree that it's it's going to get something good out. Yeah, if you do mono blue and she's your commander, it's hard to have enough creatures to sacrifice to continuously do this. Right, right. Um, but I feel like they're trying to make it so blue can fit into the token strategy. Normally, your your token colors, are they don't include blue. You know, right. Mm-hmm. Basically, every other color could be in a token color. I mean, black's a little tough, but it can get there. Blue yeah. just hasn't traditionally historically had the yeah. tools. But it's sort of like Master of Waves now exists, that Chasm Skulker that we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, there's things like Talran, Sky Summoner. Uh, it feel like... Lately, they've been sort of pushing uh, a little more token generation into blue. So maybe you make a token deck with green, white, blue or something yeah. in that realm. And, it, and I could also see it she's working. not your commander then, though. She's, she's just not your in commander. There. Yeah, she's just in there. I could also see it working in some sort of a token deck where I could see that as being interesting, making token copies or something like that, or one of your other one of your other. Uh, slivers or something like that. Oh, sliver, Julira deck. You That's what know. I meant. Slivers. Yeah, 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 yeah. slivers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like her. Not the, like the, the good thing about her is those cards that you flip over that you aren't the creature. You don't lose them. They go onto the bottom of your library. So yeah. there's no downside to doing it. That's like, what I was even if you only about. have five other creatures in your deck, you're just going to rifle until you find one of those, right. put it onto the battlefield, the rest go under the library. It didn't really... Well, that's you. the thing is like, do do you really want them on the bottom of your library or would you rather build a deck where they can be in the graveyard and then you can like reanimate the ones that are legendary with like... Um, like, uh, what's that guy called? Well, like, then it's a different kind of deck, right? It's, it's a reanimation yeah. deck. But yeah, maybe because you're sacrificing a creature. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I actually, I like this in uh, Marchesa again because she really doesn't have legendary friends. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah, got a you couple. sack a creature and she's, it's a free sack because they're going to come back. Yeah. And then and you Marchesa, want sack outlets and it gets another creature out on the battlefield. And Marchesa wins when she gets free. her creatures out. You know, that's that's how she gets that there. That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. I would love this guy in Carador, but I think I'll probably put him in Talrand. Talrand, yeah. Talrand's a good one. All right, who's next? Um, next up, we got Polymorphous Jest. Uh, probably my favorite blue card. It's one and two blue. It's an instant. Until end of turn, each creature target player controls loses all abilities and becomes a blue frog with base power and toughness. One, one. <laughs> this card is cool. <laughs> yeah, it turns everyone into a frog. Uh, there's a lot of cards that just do one damage across the board to creatures. Like spontaneous combustion that does three damage, that will literally kill every single mm-hmm. creature. So keep in mind, it says each creature. So r- regardless of hexproof, that thing is becoming a frog. Now keep in mind, it does say target up, uh, uh, target player right control. So it's not going to get rid of all the. It's not going to turn all the creatures on the board into frogs. Just one player. This one is player. like pointed at one dude. Sometimes that's all you need, though. And if you're attacking with a bunch of flying creatures or something like that, yeah. if your deck is you know largely built around flying, and somebody else has a bunch of flying creatures, and they think that they can you know protect themselves against you at one point, and you're like, eh, nope. Yeah, exactly. It, uh, it shuts stuff down, and that's fine. I love how it's like a sudden spoiling for blue that just gives them one more you know one more power at the expense of one less toughness, so it makes them a weaker you know. Uh, sudden spoiling, but at the same time, similar effect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I'll, I think also like um, if somebody's attacking you, it can be sort of like a fog effect. So if somebody's attacking you with a bunch of dudes, you right. turn them all in frogs. Yep. They only do eight damage to you or three damage to you instead of killing you. That the versatility is good. Also, you know, we've been talking blue token deck, blue token deck. This works on your own stuff in a blue token deck. You drop a coat of arms, turn all your dudes into frogs. Right. Yep. Boom. Now the coat of arms. You know, if you make ten frogs, they're all. Jeez, that's I didn't very even think true. About that. yeah, so you can do it on yourself. your own stuff, just to give just to give them the all the same tribal uh, yeah. affiliation, and then boom, they're all an popping alpha strike. up. Yeah, yeah, so, fifteen, fifteens. Yeah, and sometimes in a token deck, you know, if, let's say you've got green, white, and blue, you've made a bunch of squirrels, you've made a bunch of spirits, you've made a bunch of you know mermen, and now 
you know, that's good. But with the Anthem effect, you know, I'd rather have them all be one thing. Well, boom, I turn yeah. them all into frogs. I would love to see the game where that happens. Yeah. I think yeah. It's, it's possible because this card's versatile. It helps you in different situations. So you're putting it in your deck, and it's not only to do that. That's just if that situation comes up. Yeah. But if the situation comes up where I need to use it on defense, I do that. And if the situation comes up where I want to use it to kill all of this guy's creatures, I do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it's got great ability across the boards for both yourself and your opponent. Those are my favorite cards in EDH. Just stuff that's going to work in a variety of different circumstances. Mm -hmm. definitely next up we got our first uh, I think our first mythic for blue the soul of Ravnica four and two blue <laughs> yeah I know you're you're gonna know Craig, why what Craig. do you really think about it yeah right <laughs> it's a six six flying so by itself drafted and limited uh, ADH Ugh. so it's two abilities again one of them you can exile it from your graveyard to do the same thing the first one for the same cost is five and two blue Draw a card for each color among permanents you control. And the other one, again, is you can exile them from a graveyard to do the same thing. Uh, each color permanent you control, it's five and it's four and two blue to play it, five and two blue to use the thing. Most it, of the time it's going to draw you, you hope, three cards. Three at most. Yeah. For I mean, seven mana? I mean, I've got a five, couple five-color yeah, decks. That, five that's going to happen but most I mean, of the time. It's three. Right. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll play this in the five-color sliver deck or your you know, Chromat deck. I don't know deck. that I... I don't, I don't see this and think, oh, I'm going to put it in my five-color deck. It's just yeah. a lot of mana for that effect. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you know? I could be wrong. I mean, 6-6 six, six flying for six, it, okay, that's strong. Uh, with extra abilities, whatever. But, I mean, honestly, if I was drafting this in a pack, I, I might pass this. I might pass this along. If you were drafting it? If I were drafting it. But it's a 6-6 six, six fire for six. I mean, that's going to that, be awesome. Which is the only reason why I would probably be like, yeah. hey, And there's like, yeah, right. I don't even care what else it says on the card unless yeah, it right. says like, you know, <laughs> you, you lose, lose the, the game. game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if it's there's Jinx. no downside, yeah, for draft. But I think you're right. I think it's similar to the Soul of Theros. It's just so expensive. Just the instance where you use it. It's not that you'll never use it to draw three cards. Yeah. It's just like... Would I rather have another card in my deck taking up that spot that's doing something better for me? Because seven mana for three cards seems kind of crazy. Like, it's at what point good. am I going to be ta able to take turn nine or turn eight right. and only draw three cards? That's all I do for the, that whole the turn. The one thing yeah. I could see is that, you know, it is in blue, which is typically, you know, a, a color that would do like draw go. Mm -hmm. And in effect, like that, if it's you, true. you know, are late in the game and you have a ton of mana and, you know, either don't have a lot of cards in hand or just didn't play a card from your hand. You do that at the end of the last player's turn. You draw three more cards, then draw your for your turn. Right, that's true. Somebody, no, you know, you said draw. You drew and said go. Nobody played anything you wanted to counter or that you wanted to respond to. Right, and so yeah. you just draw three cards. It's 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 good if for it's a good point. If you're playing blue's a, a color three color that. deck, but typically if you're playing draw go, you're playing either with the Vidalcan Orrery, like we were talking about or earlier, you're playing mono blue. or you're playing yeah, mono, mono blue, blue, which now you're just drawing one card and it's like, eh. yeah. that's definitely not worth it for one right. card. Yeah, definitely not. Um, I'm just I'm not impressed too much with it. Yep, yeah. there there are, there's a better soul in here, and we'll find it. All right, the next card. Storm Tide Leviathan. Making a comeback. Yeah. It's an 8-8 eight, eight for 8 mana. That's 5 and 3 blue. It's Ooh, a Leviathan, it's yep. obviously. It has Island Walk, which means that creatures... This creature can't be blocked as long as defending player controls an island. It says all lands are islands in addition to their other types. He's so that's your lands and everybody else's. So he's automatically unblockable to everybody. Mm -hmm. And it also says creatures without flying or Island Walk can't attack see Ooh. now here's eight mana i can get behind yes yeah. i because agree here the entire board all of a sudden is just warps and the only thing that matters is the storm tide leviathan yeah so this is one of my bombs in my Tyran deck mm -hmm. because basically it cuts out you know most of their stuff you know other than their flyers which you know typically i have more flyers than them so as we were talking about earlier more flyers are better right. than less flyers even if they're bigger yep and then this guy is an 8-8 with Island Walk. He just walks right in. He's well, and like, also, whack. it turns off, like, all their ground creatures can't right. do anything. Yep. Right. So all of a sudden, like, you're not even worried about an assault. Yep. Like, in a return attack. And this guy with that guy that we were talking about earlier, Sack a Creature. Yeah. And those guys both in Talrand definitely should go in Talrand. Because, yeah. you know, now you sack one you of your tokens, you cheat this guy out, and you're just like... Especially if you got a brainstorm and you can place them where you want them. Oh, or yeah, that's that. what you want to do. Yeah, so this is... See, this card is an EDH card to me, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And Chasm that, Skulker, too. Oh, my God. I need to put this in my Joira deck. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that actually wraps up blue for us. Now we're going to move into black, the darkest of all the colors. 
Uh, that's a true Whoa. fact. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah, lots of fun cards in here, too. Not as many as white and blue. Um, Feast on the Fallen. It is a three mana. That's two and a black enchantment. At the beginning of each upkeep, if an opponent lost life last turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Marchesa. Sorry. Marchesa, yeah. And, yeah. and I, I we mentioned this in our um, deck building uh we mentioned this in our deck building episode and anything that says on each upkeep each, yeah. because that's all your opponent's upkeeps too. So, and you don't even have to be the one doing the damage as long as people are taking damage on a couple of turns as, as the table rotates, as the turn rotates around the table, then you're going to just be adding one, one counters to creatures. And yeah. It's just kind of free. Yep. And it seems innocuous, right? To other people. It's like, oh, I just made them a little bigger, but to you, if you're really trying to combo off with this, mm, this is great. It's a very high value card, I think, and Marchesa, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's that's the first. Um, card. And it's still strong in other stuff too. You know, having a you know, if you're Voltroning a general and you have five players, and by the next time it rolls around, you can have it essentially have a free like equipment that says plus four plus four. That's pretty amazing. Let me do that again because there's a giant freaking motorcycle. That guy probably traded an Alpha Time Walk for that motorcycle. Yeah, yep. Craig. No, he didn't. You are starting a me. revolution. Anyway, yeah. So being able to do this <laughs> that and. Was and me. <laughs> <laughs> being able to put a creature up like plus four plus four from four turns where people lose life is like dang that's that's pretty good for three mana and it's repeatable and right. you can choose who it goes on too yeah so glenalendra can be saved by this anything with persist says hey guess what you can persist again woodfall primus all that good stuff all right the next card we got is in garrick's wake a sorcery for seven and two black for nine total uh, destroy all creatures you don't control and all planeswalkers you don't control. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This is... Um, this is wind. new. Cyclonic Rift. Or yeah. Plague Wind. Yeah. Plague, Plague Wind, wind. but with, with, plane, with, with planeswalkers. planeswalkers as well. Yeah. This is a bonkers card. Again, it's just like... Is this a you win card? Yeah, this is an auto include in Jaleva for sure. See, um, now this I approve of way more than Mass Calcify. Right. Even though it's two more to cast, like... You approve of in the power, like I'm going to play it in my deck and the yes. power levels really. Yes, yeah. on the power level. I approve of it. I just don't like effects like this. It's like, it's just like if you get to nine mana, you win. I mean, you have to have this card, obviously, but yeah. you know, you don't need another card with it. With Jaleva, you just have to get to like five mana, realistically. Uh, this card is bonkers, though. And very rarely do you see cards that destroy planeswalkers as well, because yeah. it's a fairly new sort of card type. So this makes it automatically a very powerful card. And I would say a good investment. You know, Damnation is a high price for a reason. Black doesn't really yeah. have board wipes yeah. like that. And and this is, even though it's at nine, it's, I could see this. Yeah, but then again, there's also better board wipes at nine than this. Like the, what's In the, black? In, in mono black, black? The one, the one that, uh, that was in Commander's Arsenal where you destroy all creatures and then draw a card for Right, each. for each creature you can destroy, yeah. I, I consider that a little I bit more I don't think that's better, this. though. That kills your creatures, too. This doesn't. True. Um, yeah, there is one in Portal 3 Kingdoms that's really good, but the big one is it's Planeswalkers. And I think that's really important yeah. because there's a huge stress on Planeswalkers in this set, especially well, being able to use them I think the twice. big one is you don't control. Yes. So yeah, your board one. stays where it is, yeah. and everybody else's is just decimated. Yeah. You know, that's really hard to come back from. It's it's definitely going to replace my Plague Wind in yeah. certain yeah. decks. Just yeah. because, well, you might as well destroy Planeswalkers too. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Yeah. And having a Planeswalker out after a board wipe is the most annoying thing ever because it's like, hey, look, you got to make three 1-1 one -one tokens. And well, all and how are, are we going to get to it now? Because right. he's yeah, exactly. kept all his creatures. Right. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. That card seems bonkers to me. I think it's probably going to go in almost every black deck. Uh, yeah. yeah, especially Jaleva. All right, next is Indulgent Tormentor. This is the promo card. It yeah, is, for the black um, pre pre-release. Yep, it's five mana. That's three black black for a 5-3 flying demon. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card unless target opponent sacrifices a creature or pays three life. Oh, this is amazing. You get this is the best promo card by far. You right? get yeah. yeah, oh yeah, by far. Because here's the thing, you know, there are cards like Frickstein Arena where you lose a life for drawing an extra card. This is, you draw a card and someone else has to do something that really hurts. Yeah. And by the way, you're always going to be find, be able to find a player yes, that's going to let you draw the card. Exactly. Because right. it's one card. Right. They don't want to take damage or sacrifice, sacrifice one of their creatures. nice creatures so that yeah. one player draws a card like if it was everybody draws a card but them they'd do it yeah. but for one dude whatever and then you just go to the next guy the next guy because mm -hmm. somebody might not give you four cards in a row but this guy only gave you one and that guy only gave you one yeah. before and, you know it and Absolutely. at the end of the day you have a five three flying demon yeah and like, especially sweet. in in uh like uh rakdos lord of riots if you have that deck i mean this is a clear 
you know, candidate for that deck because now if they pay three life, now you can play your Rakdos or you have three more mana to spend on your artifacts. Right, that absolutely. That turn, yeah, or you're drawing a card or they're sacking a creature. So yeah, allowing there's you, no good you, choices for There's them no yeah. good choice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a great call. That's a really good call. Rakdos is a really fun deck to build too and it's a two-color deck. So if you guys are looking for that, I would also put this straight up in Kalia immediately. Because this is one of those cards in Kali that you want to have that you can also cast from your hand. You don't have to necessarily have Kali cheat him out, you know. Is yeah. it a demon? It is a it demon. It is a demon, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's called Indulgent Tormentor. I don't think I don't think Angel's a Tormentor there either. Maybe a Kith can be a Tormentor. I want to see that card. Kith now can are Tormentor. We, so is this guy a dude, Jim? Is this guy, because he's a demon, does that mean he's a I dude? I mean, look at the muscles on him. <laughs> he's also torturing people. I don't know. I think that's very manly behavior. Although, you know, I, you know it, anyone could do it. I'm going to make the argument that could be a female and the angels could be guys. Wow, that's true. Well, I'm just in case, going to make that argument. You know, <laughs> Even though it's going to go nowhere. Yeah. I'm staying out of that whole discussion. <laughs> All right, let's take it on to other uh, other black magic sorceresses here. Uh, Liliana Fest is getting a reprint. Uh, not of the veil, sorry, collectors. Uh, actually, well, no, I guess no, you're welcome. Collectors. You're welcome, collectors. Yeah, sorry, new people that want to play Lily on the Veil. Anyway, uh, Lily on the Vest is three and two black, five total. She comes in with five loyalty points counters. Loyalty counters. Uh, she's a planeswalker. Her first ability plus one target player discards a card. Second ability minus two. Search your library for a card, then shuffle your library and put that card on top of it. And her minus eight. Put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. I mean, nine times out of ten, you bring her out, you tutor twice, and then you just start doing plus one because you have to, and yeah. hopefully you can tutor again, right? Yep. Or yep. in the right decks. I mean, I've seen, uh, you know, the black-green elf guy who, you know, at the beginning of your turn, somebody uh, discards a card, and you get a green elf into play. Oh, yeah, and then you just make this. Yeah. And this uh, Liliana, with her abilities, I see every one of her abilities on this card being useful. Yeah. Um, which, to your point, is something that you look for. You know, a doubling season, you can au automatically use uh, her ultimate ability, which, to your point earlier about destroying all creatures, same thing with bringing back all creatures from the graveyard, is unbelievably powerful. Um, and obviously her, you know, uh, vampiric tutor effect can Demonic can work. tutor. Minus two? I, I consider that two Vampiric, because it goes to the top of the library. Oh, that's right, that's right. My um, apology. So, but, you know, but with a top or something like that, you can then draw that. The, the only see, thing that I see is, you know, her second ability does have to wait a turn unless you have a top or some sort of yeah. draw spell. I, I, go ahead. I, I was just say, I have seen Liliana fetch a commander that's been tucked multiple times, though, and that's always funny. I think double a tutor, it's just totally worth it just for that effect. She doesn't mm -hmm. protect herself, which I don't like particularly well, which I was talking about earlier. Like, yeah. she, there's nothing, none of her abilities, like, cause you to not be able to attack her. They just make people want to well, attack yeah. her. That Typically, means... she's late in the game, too, and when she's been utilized against me, it's been the discard that I hated. You know, because typically I'm holding on to it's turn five or turn yeah, four. Yeah, if there's a right. combo, I'm the... holding on to like two cards to as answers to something, and then this person's making me discard, which it's probably like a kill spell or you know, as we talked right, about earlier true. with like yeah. the swords to plow. But that's like more of a one v one play, though. I mean, in general, true. if you're playing with four people, like one player is going to discard a card, so it's like, well, pick them whether that's even you. Yeah, um, right. Um, you know, I, I, th I th it's not that she's not good. I just think she's not like. It's, she's, she's not, not broken. broken. You have a great Harder point that her. these other games that I was playing I, were typically one on one or two uh -huh. on. Yeah, it's it's all about the minus twos. It, just being able to tutor for something is great. I mean, that's worth it. Just just for what it is, it's a double tutor. So I think that's totally worth it. She's, yeah, definitely. She's just not broken. All right, next we're gonna do Obnix Nixilis. Obnixilis unshackled. Nice. Unshackled. Is that like being unplugged? Yeah, I guess so. He's, he's unplugged. Live. He's live. He's live well, he was the fallen before, and now he's unshackled. Oh so man, he got up. He's he has he's not falling anymore. He's a very detailed person. <laughs> he's he's like, had a rich history of of. Next, states. he's gonna be Omnixilis, the walking. <laughs> uh, yeah, like Omnixilis. Well, he got up. Like, he fell. Then he got up. Got unshackled. He's unshackled. Off, yeah, and now he's walking. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. And then eventually he'll fly. He's gonna become an angel with the rest of his brothers. Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you? Oh. Wait, <laughs> right. wait, Craig. Why'd the you, why'd you call him the he? risen? Why'd you call him a he? Because I mean, he's gonna know? he's gonna ascend you know into he's gonna ascend into an angel when he's and he has to be a he the, when the he's risen. An angel, Could she ascend into an angel? All right, but um, Nixilis. This unshackled. is another card that was created by uh, one of the game designers. That's one right. of the other game oh, okay. designers, Brad Muir. And again, I think it has awesome flavor. I am definitely looking forward to this guy in, in EDH. All right, let me read him really quick. He's a uh, six mana four four flying trampler that's four and two black 
It says, whenever an opponent searches his or her library, that player sacrifices a creature and loses 10 life. Oh, goodness. Whenever another creature dies, put a 1-1 counter on on Obnixilis Unshackled. Wait, he's going to get huge with Trample, and then as long as you're not tutoring yourself, yeah. which is tough in black. Yeah, I you're in admit. black. I mean, you're no, in the no, best tutor opponent. You, it's you an opponent. To, but, oh, no. When an opponent, it's an opponent searches, does it. You can search oh. all you want. See? Oh. This Go guy just awesome. gets better and better. It's yeah, he's, he's, he's fantastic. Uh, oh, especially this is a great commander card because everybody wants to tutor all the time. Yeah, tutoring is one of the most or important things. Or search their library. Well, well. Or search their library, period. Like, that does it for um, for uh, fetch lands, uh, or even like the crappy ones, like t- evolving wilds and stuff. Right, right. It does right. it for like fauna shaman, so many and things. Survival the fittest, and if you're playing search green, for anything, they're hosed because they can't get their lands out of their library if they're green. You know. Oh yeah, if you yeah, have a, a lot yeah. of lands. Yep. Yeah, yeah, oh, seriously. Yeah. Are so those may abilities like on uh, I don't know. Some of them are. I think some of them are not the older cards. I think just tell you to do it. When he dies, you know, go to your library and get this or whatever. Dude, this can be brutal. That's a lot of life. Yeah, yeah. Ten, that's a quarter. And it goes to Marchesa. I mean, it gets yep. the counters. Oh, and this it'll is... get the counters when you sack a creature. Like, yeah, not many, not many black creatures have plus one, plus one counter abilities. Yeah, this is one of them. This is definitely my favorite card of the set. Yeah, like, I, I think you can. It just does a lot of stuff, and it he's turns fantastic. off a lot of stuff. Yeah, I didn't realize it was opponent. That, that I didn't makes either. It, that makes it crazy. My God, I yeah. was excited. Yeah. You before. don't even have to build your deck around that. Like, take out your tutors and whatnot. Yeah. Wow, that's a good card. That's, that's a great card. The next card is in the Soul uh, s- cycle. It's Soul of Innistrad. It's six mana. That's four and two black for a 6-6 six, six avatar with death, with death touch. It Again, it has the two abilities. One is sort of the flashback ability. Um, it says pay three colorless and two black and return up to three target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. And again, you can also exile Soul of Innistrad from your graveyard for the same mana cost and get the same effect one time. Nice. Okay. That's a little better, but I still don't love it. There's plenty of other reanimation options in black, I think. I wish it took just one creature and put it on the battlefield. Yeah. Did, so you can do some tricky stuff with it. This is yeah. just like, again, eh, take three creatures, bring it to your hand. It's sort of value, but it's value. I don't know. Yeah. It's less value. It's I less agree. value. Uh, and I think all the souls suffer from this because I think they're really good within their own set. And I think they're really good because it is a core set. They're a very basic card. What they do is pretty basic. Uh, the nice spicy thing about this is that they get egg- you can exile it to do the same thing if it's in your graveyard. Um, but for the most part, it's just, for me, I-, I would not use this in EDH. You know, in other formats, it might be great. In limited, it could be a you know an awesome parody situation. You need to get your best guys back out or something. But in EDH, I would, there's just so many other options here. Yeah, I agree. I think it'd be much better if, he, if it brought one just back to the battlefield instead of three. Two. Yeah, then it would be playable. Yeah, right. I'm definitely. kind of disappointed so far by these. It's okay, guys. We got one waiting on us. I swear. Yeah, it's, the it's, mythics in this set, or the at least the soul. The of souls, mythics, yeah. Are just like they're disappointing me. I agree. Well, I, what, when you grade by EDH power levels, you're going to get disappointed. I'll just say that much. <laughs> the uh, mythics, other than the planeswalkers, I do like how they have five legit planeswalkers in this, which I know yeah. they do in all the core sets. But the the fact that they added a few to this one, yeah, the, yeah, the, the ones great. that they added are freaking awesome. Yeah. All right, our last black card here is one in a black, an enchantment called Waste Not. And this was designed by <gasps> the Magic Community, which means that oh. this was voted on and people decided that this is what they wanted to make into a card based oh, from cool. the Magic Community. Yeah, which I think is a great thing. To, like, awesome. That's so cool. Thank you, Wizards. I think it's a great way to involve the player base and the community. So it's an enchantment that says, whenever an opponent discards a creature card, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Whenever an opponent discards a land card, add two black to your mana pool. Whenever an opponent discards a non-creature, non-land card, draw a card. This so. reminds me of that green spell from M14, green enchantment. I don't know. It basically, like, you got some effect whenever you did, you know, uh, this yes. stuff. What was that? Primeval Bounty. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, right, right. Primeval? Primordial Method. Bounty. Yeah, right. I, th- I think this has a lot of utility if you can build around it. Um, I really think the important thing is that you're, if you're going to make opponents discard cards, they're going to eventually run out of cards. Less so in EDH because you have more opponents, but this has a limit to it. You know what I mean? Uh, well, my I mean, favorite thing yeah. about this card is the casting cost. You know, one black and one yeah. other is mm-hmm. fantastic. Get yep. this out on turn two, and then you're going to get some utility about it uh, out of it because usually nobody's going to be able to destroy an enchantment at two or you know less or whatever. 
And if they and, do, you're happy. They use one of their right. destroy mm -hmm. enchantment cards on your two drop enchantment. Like, right. That's, yeah. You're fine with that. Exactly. Whereas Primeval Bounty was six to get out. It had some strong effects, but at the same time, this does, has some strong effects too, but for two is... I mean, really this only good. goes in like a dedicated discard deck, but there are EDH discard decks that are pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, you were just talking about one, actually. So that, you know, with Liliana and yeah. you know, a lot of synergies... Um, yeah, I, I just think this card like belongs in those decks. I'd be interested to see if this makes it to like standard and modern and all that. You know, I'd, I'd love to see if someone could stick this well, in there. Well, standard, I just don't think there's probably a dedicated discard deck where it can where it can live. But I don't know about modern. Yeah, is there a discard deck that? I don't know. I mean, it makes your mono, thoughts. I don't know. Mono black devotion at this point. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's still something, yeah. but you have to be making them discard, like, otherwise... There's your Thoughtseize. I mean, it makes your Thoughtseize a little better because if you can draw a card to put the creature out, you know, you get an advance, like, a slight up on that. I don't know. It, we'll see, right? It definitely, there are EDH decks that belongs in. Uh, there, there are some discard ones. Yeah. Sure makes that discard in Liliana look better, huh? Yeah, that's what huh? I'm saying. That's, that's right, saying. that's right. <laughs> oh, before we, we forget, the end of Black is here. Let's, let's applaud all the sweet designer cards. There are a couple that we didn't cover. Uh, so just make sure you guys check it out. They all on the bottom of the card say designed by and then a name or the magic community or, you know, uh, that's pretty much it. It's a name or a community. So check those cards out. I think they're all a lot of fun. I would love for Wizards to keep doing this. I think yeah, it's, I really think it's cool a idea. ton of fun. Yeah. Uh, those, I was telling uh, these guys earlier, those are some of my favorite cards in the set are the ones that were designed by some of the gamers and by the community. They just have so much flavor to them and they have so many... Seem yeah. to have so many options that are very EDH centric, which you know I I love. All right, we're into red. All right, we got burning anger. It's four and a red for an enchantment enchant creature. Enchanted creature has tap it. This creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature or player. Yeah, it's not bad for five though. It's expensive. So what we were talking about earlier, that white guy that that, that can tap. Yes. Yeah. He's that's a perfect combo right there. Yep. yep. Kill a guy, untap him, do it again, yep. and. You know, that's... If you have token generators... Yep. Uh, if you have ways to make him stronger... Not even, because it's anybody else's creatures either. So yeah, it's like, true. when yeah. their creatures are coming in, you're like, all right, I, you know, if it's two, you're like, I kill it, or I deal two to you, fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. yep. Which is a lot of fun. There's, I think there's a lot of combos you can make with this card, because there oh, are ways yeah. to sort of infinitely untap creatures, and oh, all yeah. you need in that instance is a way for that to matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Kiki so, Jiki with this is just... It just has too much fun. That and Thornbite Staff, it, he's going to go to town just hitting everyone for everything. Fun. All right, yeah. next is Chandra Pyromancer. This is a reprint, right? Yep. All right. Chandra is a four loyalty planeswalker. She costs two and two red. Her plus one is she deals one damage to target player and one damage to up to one target creature that player controls. That creature can't block this turn. She has a zero ability, which is exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. And then she has a negative seven ability, which is exile the top 10 cards of your library. Choose an instant or sorcery card. In choose an instant or sorcery card exiled this way and copy it three times. You may cast the copies without paying their mana cost. Um, I mean, she's a reprint, so we don't have to go into too much detail. Yeah. Her plus one is only okay. It's, it's not going to do much in EDH. Her zero ability is basically like draw an extra card, but you have to play it this turn. Yeah. Again, it's okay. Even her ultimate is like... It, you have to stack your deck to make it effective. You it have to find only, some way to put stuff in the back and top of your deck. Yeah, or you know, you Don't just take the build chance. a deck that has like a bunch of huge sorcery and instant effects. I yeah. It's tough to do in red unless you're doing mono red, which again, isn't really burn based anymore. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with this yeah yeah I, I just don't think it's very good for edh yeah no thanks circle of flame it's one in a red for an enchantment whenever a creature without flying attacks you or a planeswalker you control circle of flame deals one damage to that creature that's cool just a lot of you know poking around the corner and stuff so um it, it's gonna hose token decks if they're all at one ones um but you know for the most part in edh i don't see this being that effective because one damage isn't is usually not enough to make a difference this is a meta play though i think if in your meta there's a powerful token deck and there are a lot of powerful token decks then this can this belongs in your deck like yeah you know this is an answer to certain decks uh, small like or decks or token decks yeah so you know just within your meta if if those decks are present and they're strong then this this can go in your deck yep next up crucible of fire three in the red Enchantment, dragon creatures you control get plus three, plus three. All right. Stronger, all right, stronger all right. dragons. All right, all right. All That's right. what Matthew McConaughey would say about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, you know, I'm down. 
Um, I, I, I not too many decks can use this. It has to be very specific. There are some dragon EDH decks though, and this mm-hmm. is just going right in there. Yeah, it's a it's a great fit. There's cyan of the ur that this works well in. Otherwise, uh, the black red one, blade wing the risen. Yeah, blade wing is is cool. Really well in that as well. If you don't have a dedicated dragon deck, if you're only part dragon, yeah, don't don't do it. Do it. Yeah, don't if you're Kalia. Don't, don't do, do it. it. Yeah, because yeah, that's one third of your deck if you're lucky. Yeah. It's not, and if it's you're Kalia and you're playing more dragons than angels, you're probably doing the wrong thing. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're definitely doing, doing it the wrong. wrong thing. Yeah. Moving on, Hoarding Dragon, three and two red. So it's a flying uh, dragon. It's a 4-4. Four, four. When, en- when Hoarding Dragon enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact card, exile, and shuffle your library. When Hoarding Dragon dies, you may put the exiled card into its owner's hand. This can be abused with Kiki Jiki. That's really, I think, the limit for from my personal experience. He's great in mono red. Yeah, in a, mono any red, mono red just... deck, whether it's you know uh, Urbarask or Kiki Jiki or Marchesa, know. I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah, yep. definitely. You can put a token on him, sack him, get your artifact into play. He comes back in, and you you have a lot of artifacts in the Marchesa deck. You can yeah. get all your modular guys just out yeah. onto the table. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that every turn. You know, just make sure nobody else has uh, Obnixilis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't that's want to... don't play this guy if somebody has Omnixos. Just yeah. hold it in your hand. Yeah, but he's been around, so there's a lot of stuff that you can use him for. He's a, he's a strong creature for sure. Anything with tutor effect tack onto it is pretty strong, and the fact that you can you know control it somewhat by sacrificing or whatever makes it powerful. Yeah, definitely. And All have right. it on a stick with a four four flyer that you know you can just use to block somebody else's stuff and then die and then get exactly. something in your hand. They might not even want to attack you now because they don't want to kill that thing. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, they don't want you to put some, you know... Blight steel into play. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, so the next is Kirkesh Onaki Ancient. I'm sure I'm not saying that right, but whatever. It's a uh, 4-3 Ogre Spirit for 4 mana. That's 2 and 2 red. Whenever you activate an ability of an artifact, if it isn't a mana, mana ability, you may pay red. If you do copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. So this just doubles up a um, non-mana ability of an artifact. So it means it has mana in the activation cost? No, it means if it creates mana, then it's a mana. Yeah, if it creates mana, you can't double it. But gotcha. If, oh, my God. Like this with uh, with Memnarch? Ugh. Oh, my yep. gosh. Yep. I mean, thank God it's one it can't red. go in a Memnarch yeah. deck. But, you know, if you do, if you are playing blue and red with Memnarch in there, this yeah. this is a definite candidate. Yeah, Animar yeah. wants this guy yep. to hang out. Um, the other thing is, like, can't this work with Trionic Resonator? Yep. Yeah, oh so yeah. just resonate even harder for one red each time. Yep, yep, oh my yep. gosh. Or Mirari, or I mean, like this works with a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a it's a card you can break in EDH uh, just with the 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 card pool that you have available to you. So I would definitely. It's just a card to look into for infinite combo type stuff, or just like you know strong combo type stuff. And yeah. four for a three three is pretty good. Yep. Not bad. Yeah. So let's see. Next up, oh, we've got the Siege Dragon. Yes. Yes. Uh, this guy is really fun. He lays siege to towns. He's five and two red, so seven total for a five-five flying dragon. When siege dragon enters the battlefield, destroy all walls your opponents control. Whenever siege dragon attacks, if defending player controls no walls, it deals two damage to each creature without flying that player controls. Very flavorful. He's breathing fire everywhere. If you don't, if you can't hide behind your walls, you're in big trouble. And yeah, uh, people don't play a lot of walls in EDH. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, I, I think it's just great because it's going to deal two two damage to. It. I mean, again, this is going to hose a token deck, right? And it's when he attacks, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's already dealing two damage to creatures, and then he's a 5-5. Five, five. So it's almost like if anybody's trying to block him, it's almost like he's a 7-5. Yep. Well, they'd have to be flying to block him, and it does it to yeah. creatures without flying. So. Uh, good point. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's still like super powerful effect because right. it's, it's a wrath effect that Before. happens when you attack. I mean... Let's yeah. be honest, like 99% of the time, there's not going to be a wall there. Yeah. So he's going to just get that second ability. Yeah. It seems it seems brutal. And also, Red has all the effects, these effects that like double the amount of damage that it does. Like if he's attacking and doing four damage to everything they've got without flying. Oh, they're all going to die. Everything's yeah, it's dying. Like you just lose. You can't beat that. Oh, like, him and Gisela yeah. is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you just lose that game, sorry, like, I mean, unless you can already, remove it. Yeah, what's the one that uh, when it deals damage to an opponent, it deals six damage to all their creatures? Uh, There's another dragon from yeah. a couple sets ago that when it deals damage to an opponent, it deals six damage to all their creatures. Oh, wow. And, yeah. Yeah, and that guy's bonkers, and this is when it attacks. When it attacks. So they yeah. can't stop it as long as you can get the attack off. Yeah, yeah exactly. They can't just chump block it. Yeah. 
All right. Next is Soul of Chandelar. It is in the mythic uh, cycle, the Soul Loves. It's a 6-6 six, six for 6 mana. That's 4 and 2 red. Avatar with first strike. Its ability is pay 3 and 2 red. Soul of Chandelar deals 3 damage to target player and 3 damage to up to 1 target creature that player controls. Boo. Then, of course, you can do the flashback thing where you exile it and do that ability once. So I'm not five. impressed. Uh, it's cost so much. I can't believe they made these I just guess ethics. these soul loves uh, just aren't made for EDH. They've, yeah. they've got to be so powerful in draft format oh, that they right. had to make them yeah. mythic. Yeah. Because yeah. these aren't the ones that they made for EDH. I think that the ones that they made for EDH are the flavorful ones that they had the other game designers design, as well as the, the Planeswalkers seem yeah. fantastic for EDH. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then they finally gave us another uh, sliver general, potentially. Yeah, yeah, true. Which yeah. I think is cool. True. You know, I think, yeah, Siege Dragon is definitely EDH, but yeah, the, the soul cards for the most part, except for one, are not EDH friendly. All right, next up, we have a reprint that many people are just screaming for joy with. I don't know if they're screaming, but they are joyful because it's Chord of Calling, a card that used to be like $40. Uh, from, I would scream, but it would hurt all of your ears. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. It's from Ravnica. The original card is from the Ravnica, cla- correct? Cla- cla- enough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so it costs X and three green. It's an instant with Convoke, so you can pay for the X and the green with your guys if you tap your creatures, depending on the color. Uh, search your library for a creature card with Converted Mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. I think it's pretty obvious to say that this with tokens tapping for a ton and just putting out the fattest, biggest guy you mm-hmm, want mm-hmm. is just un- incredible. And you can do it early, too. Even in just like an elf deck or anything that's just going to have... You don't even need a bajillion creatures. I mean, if yeah. you can just get four or five and mm-hmm. just hard cast it. Yeah. What yeah. I love about this is... It's a tutor. It's most but... of the other effects like this, you know, of bringing other creatures onto the battlefield, with the exception of, of a few, like Pattern to Rebirth and whatnot, are for green spe- creatures specifically, mm-hmm. like Green Sun Zenith or um, uh, Nature's... What, the one that you sack a green creature, get a green creature into play. What I love about this is it's any creature natural comes natural order. Uh, this comes directly into play, and yep. uh, and it's any creature. And, that's and it's an super, instant. If that's right. And it has the ability with Convoke that you can cheat the cost. Yep. Yeah, that's why it was an expensive card. It's it's bonkers in EDH. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, we're all happy it's back. Yeah. We're happy it's back, and it's cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, we can actually get it or crack a pack and find one. Who knows? Uh, next up, we got Genesis Hydra, which I'm kind of excited about. It's X and green, green for a zero, zero plant Hydra. When you cast Genesis Hydra, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put a non-land permanent card with converted costs X or less from among them onto the battlefield, then shuffle the library. Uh, Genesis Hydra enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. So another okay. really great way to cheat in creatures, especially if you, you know, let's say you run a deck that you know nothing's below four. You know, you pay four and two, two. And you basically know that you're gonna get something sweet out, you know. I love this. This was created by the the guy who did uh, Plants vs Zombies, and Perfect. I love this because it's in <laughs> it's in green. Um, it's very flavorful. It's exactly like the game that he created. You know, it's a plant that's somewhat zombie like, and that it brings out a uh, creature. <laughs> and that's awesome. uh, you it's know, a plant it just hydra. it's yeah. definitely going in a few of my green decks where either I'm trying to recur creatures or it, it just seems very interesting. And yeah. EDH cheating creatures out, however you do it, is always powerful. There's always ways yep. to abuse that. Yeah. And the bigger he gets, the bigger thing that you get to cheat into the battlefield. Exactly. Which is cool. All right, I'm excited about this next one. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I just it seems cool. It's called Hornet Nest. It's two and a green for a zero two insect with defender. Whenever Hornet Nest is dealt damage, put that many one one green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch onto the battlefield. Cool. So this is just begging for like indestructible or something and then just persistent damage to it. Yeah. And especially if you're doing that damage to itself too, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. And and 1-1 one, one flying death touchers are like brutal to deal with. With flying. Oh, goodness. Especially at a token. I mean, this is what I see as a clear token winner. It's three to get out. It's a 0-2, so it's a creature with defender, which is fine. It, does that count as a wall? Because it's defender. No, I don't think it so, does. It does what the wall does, though. Anyways, the the fact that now you can use that to get other flyers with death touch into the battlefield, even if it just kills itself for two, mm-hmm. and you get two one one flying death touch. You know, they're flyers with death touch, and then in a token deck where you know essentially you're building up enchantments to make those creatures even bigger. Now you you know, let's say you have a few other things out. They're four four flying death touch. 
that's that's a huge a huge threat. Well, Later plus, I mean, if somebody attacks you with an eight eight, you get eight, right? Yeah, you get eight. It kills it, but you get eight because it's dealt eight damage. Unless right? it's got oh, trampled. God. Yeah. So Unless for three trampled, for three yeah. mana. Yeah, I mean, they they might be as scared to attack you with one of their huge things because they don't want to give you eight. Death yeah, touch. that's a, that's they don't a really want to piss off the hornet's nest. Yeah, man. Exactly. yeah. Don't kick yeah. the hornet's nest. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great, great name for a card too. Yeah, I love it. Next up, we got a new freaking planeswalker. How exciting! It's Nissa World Waker. This actually art drew some ire because it is a uh, heavily based off of a real life person who is a uh, a female Australian uh, rapper, singer, artist um, with D and Food. You guys remember those guys? They're pretty crazy. Um, but it is Nissa. Nissa gets a new print in Nissa World Waker, and it's a three and I'm two. I'm not cool green. enough to get that refer- reference. Are you? No, no. You guys don't know DM, but they did some like crazy. It, it's almost like joke rap from Australia. It's so bold and audacious. It's just ridiculous. And well, I'll I show mean, you guys a video after. Apparently, she's fit. Yes, she's very fit. I um, meet her. A very iconic face as well. Uh, three and two green for a planeswalker with three loyalty points, and she has two plus one plus one abilities. Already something cool here. First one is plus one. Target land you control becomes a 4-4 four, four elemental creature with trample. It's still a land. Her second ability is another plus one. Untap up to four target forests. And her ultimate is minus seven. Search your library for any number of basic land cards. Put them on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Those lands become 4-4 four, four elemental creatures with trample. They're still lands. Dude, in EDH, that ultimate is crazy. That's ridiculous. You can now that, four fours out. that is bonkers, but what I don't like about that ultimate is... A wrath effect now gets rid of all those lands, but to like my god, I don't a bunch think you of four use fours. it unless you have a haste effect out, mm-hmm. right? But if you have fires of Yavamaya, Concord and, and Crossroads, oh, yeah. or just like Ogre Battle Driver, then they're all six fours for that turn. You're yeah. just gonna kill everybody. Like, True, they're just dead. Yeah, but you can go infinite with her, right, Jimmy? Yes, you can. Her, her ability to untap four target forests uh, goes with Rao Zarek, and the card that adds uh, that lets you use Planeswalker stuff twice. Because essentially you can use those four forests and Rao Zarek to keep untapping and tapping this artifact and and uh, using everyone's abilities over and over again. So you can literally have her go up to an arbitrary number of 10,000, you know, whatever loyalty points and just ultimate her right then and there. Or you can just keep doing that and then keep... Yeah, you need another... Well, you can only use yeah. her ability once per No, turn. there's the artifact. There is an artifact in this set that lets you activate oh, right. the abilities twice if you can untap it and tap it again, and three times if you can do it again. And because it takes four mana, she untaps four lands for a plus one, and Ralzera can untap an artifact. So, voila. You've got basically a, re- a repeating cycle where you can just keep going okay. back and forth. Again, I'm going to three card combos are not combos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it is possible, and it's cool that you can I don't go. Know what infinite. you're talking about? I pull <laughs> off like six card combos all the time in EDH. <laughs> right. It is. It is cool though because we've never seen the Planeswalker go infinite, and that's just like a, an yeah, insane thought. That is cool. That's right. That is cool. very cool. That's pretty cool. So you basically create infinite mana. You use that mana to untap Chain Veil. Or yeah, to exactly. Use chain Veil and yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ralzeric technically taps a permanent and then untaps another target permanent. Yeah. So you just tap something arbitrary and just untap your, you know, your sweet artifact each time to keep doing it. And we'll gotcha. talk about that artifact later on. Yeah, so she's, how do you keep activating Raul Zarek's ability? Because he Chain also Vail. gets to do it twice. Chain Veil lets you use any Planeswalker ability again for four and tapping it. Holy balls. Yeah, so it's interesting. Uh, There's th- going to be a bunch of ways to abuse the Chain Veil. They yeah. just haven't had... We haven't had time to think about all the planeswalkers in it yet. Yeah, but and the none of them were designed to use twice. None of the planeswalkers were designed that way. So yeah, that that's watch. There's gonna be some broken stuff with that. Chain yeah, though. definitely. That um, sounds awesome. Yeah, but yeah, Nissa I think is great. She's unbelievable. If you can get haste on her little creatures, uh, I think she's at three because doubling season. I think that's why she starts at three. Oh yeah. Otherwise, being able to use her immediately is like, all right, game over. You cast her for five. Yeah, because I mean, she, her with tokens and then lands also becoming creatures like that's that's super powerful with stuff like uh, yeah. She she also effectively costs one if you want because you can untap the four force like mm-hmm. right away. Yeah, exactly. Which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. turn five, she costs one essentially. Yeah. Um, also. She does protect herself if you need her to because she turns one of your lands into a 4 4 creature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Notice it doesn't say until end of turn. So that's just a 4 4 creature for good. Yep. So yeah. she can immediately put a 4 4 out, which is pretty good. Uh, she can actually put a 4 4 indestructible out if you play Dark Steel Citadel. There are right. lots of lands that have fun stuff on them. Dark Steel Citadel straight up says indestructible land. So she can make a 4 4 indestructible elemental creature land. And that's just like, well, that's pretty good for a planeswalker. Pretty good. So, yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff you can do with her. I, I, I like her. Yeah, I do too. Even if you don't go infinite with her. 
Exactly. All right, the next card is Reclamation Sage. It's a 2-1 for 2 and a green. It's an elf shaman. When Reclamation Sage enters the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or or enchantment. Nice. It's like acidic slime, but a little bit worse, um, I think. But it's better than like War Priest of Thune. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's cheaper than acidic slime to cast. Yes, yeah. exactly. Five. Acidic slime has is death touch, and that's about it. But this is nice. You can blink this guy too, and he's. I think great. this goes in the Flicker deck in the place of like War Priest of Thune, like in the mm-hmm. like because it does two things. So I the, love how it's basically it's not instant speed like. Um, you know, uh, cross and grip, but it's uh-huh. it's basically a cross and grip. It not, again, not with the instant speed or the split second, but on a stick that can be recurred. You know, right. like you guys are talking mm-hmm. about, where you can sack it, recast it, something like that. Yeah, blink it. All right, next is in the soul of cycle, soul of Zendikar. It is six mana for a six six as usual. That's four and two green. It's an uh, it has reach. Its ability is pay three and two green. Put a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token onto the battlefield. And then you can do the flashback thing. Excel if I'm your graveyard, do that once. Right. Is um, this the one you were talking about, Jim? No, this is not the one. No, we're not. I do love this one beasts, is, though. This one is close to usable because five mana for a 3-3 three, three is at least like... Yeah. That's And with reach, too. That's very 6-6 six, six for a 6-6 six, six with reach. With reach. Or yeah. yeah. And green good. has trouble with flyers, so yep. it wants reach more than... I can see this as being playable. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's fringe playable. Fringe playable. Right. Yeah, there's probably better stuff, but if you're you know you don't always have the best stuff that you would want. Exactly. This can go in there and it can do stuff. And paying the five mana for a three three or ten mana for two three threes, you know it can do some stuff. If you have doubling season and stuff, maybe. It, and again, in token decks like white green specifically, it's tough without like a greater good or something like that. And again, even with greater good in a token deck, it's tough to get your tokens above three. Yeah. So it's tough to card draw. And uh-huh. something like this, whether it's in your graveyard or out on the battlefield, again, if if it gets around and you weren't able to use all your mana the turn before, it's a great option to put a three three, especially instead of a one one into play. You know, like Risk the Redeemed is three to get out of one one. A lot of things are three to get out of one one or four to get out of two two. So five for a three three, that's repeatable. So if you have ten, now you can put out two three threes at instant speed at the end of somebody else's turn. I see that or as Or if they attack you. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's playable. It's, it's playable. It's not it's hard to break it, but it's playable. Yes. Yeah. Good cards should be hard to break. Uh, underground, undergrowth Scavengers are next option. Three in the green. It's a fungus horror creature. That's a zero zero, and it enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Uh, definitely better in EDH because there's just gonna be more graveyards going around and more creatures in them. Plus, yeah, exactly. We we said in the deck building 101 episode, like look at these things that that look at all graveyards or all hands or mm-hmm. all libraries or whatever. Um, they just have the ability to beam a little bit more broken. Yeah. I love how this one is plus one, plus one counters yeah. instead of is, you a- know, X-X power and toughness yeah, equal exactly. to whatever. This is much, much more interesting, much more easy to break, um, you know, with something like uh, Corpse Jack Menace or something like that. You yeah. Know, this can be very interesting. Yeah. Having plus one, plus one counter is definitely a big difference. I learned that when making the Matrice deck more than anything else. All right. The next one is oh yeah I'm 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 curious about this one, Yisan the Wanderer Bard. <laughs> I want Wandering Bard, but I yeah. guess Wanderer Bard too. It's a uh, Brian Fargo, so it's a it's a fan, it's a not a fan. It's a uh, it's a game designer made this guy, or a prominent community guy. It is a legendary creature, human rogue, two and a green for a two three. Its ability is tap it and two and a green. Put a verse counter on Yisan. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of verse counters on Yisan. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So it's a way to cheat creatures onto the battlefield. We know that's mm-hmm. always through the history of magic. It's always very powerful, and you know it's it's not too difficult to break that effect. Yeah. This one's interesting because it, it grows. So the first time you do it, you can only go get a one mana costed thing then a two mana costed thing then a three. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly ascendant. in in edh you can find broken one mana costed stuff and then broken two broken, two, mana, broken, broken three, three. Yeah, this exactly. guy i'm super excited about plus with doubling season he gets twice as many counters on him yeah so you can go from uh, two to four to eight primeval bounty or whatever or the six. new one is that uh puts co- extra counters on everybody's stuff he gets two counters on him um 
you know, and then with the planeswalkers, there's a way to put extra counters on them. So you then, might even want to start taking counters off at some point if you could. Yeah, that'd be really cool. They can get to the point where I don't have anything Too that much, costs right? more than yeah. 12. <laughs> right. You know? I think this is really cool, though, because you could build like a green stompy aggro deck that's like, all right, this is the plan. Get Yisan out on turn two or, or turn three. Uh, and then I'm going to try and pump him. So first we're going to grab a Sarah Ascendant. Next we're going to grab this. Next we're going to grab this. Or if you're all in green, like first I'm going to get a um, Birds of Paradise, you know, or a Noble Hierarch or something, you know, just in just like popping them off one at a time. I think that's really cool. It's it's good in toolboxy type decks because it can allow you to go find the creature that's right for the situation that you're in. So, yeah. you know, I always like that too. It just gives me the ability to find the answers I need. I love how he's like an Aether Vial that, you get to search your library for. Plus, he's three mana cost for a two three. Mm-hmm. He's you know he's got the protection that he needs with a three with a three defense. You know protection against Elish Norn or some stupid crap like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like him. He's cool and verse counters. I don't think we've ever seen that before. All right, next up we've got Garrick. Garrick has returned as a new planeswalker, and this time he is cursed a little bit. He's got black and green in his mana cost. He's five, a black and a green, so seven total for a planeswalker. With five loyalty counters, he has four abilities. This is the second only Planeswalker ever to have four abilities, the other one being Chase the Mind Sculptor. And we know how that turned out. Yeah, exactly. Um, his, his first ability, plus one, destroy another target Planeswalker. I mean, that's pretty nice. That's a plus one? Yeah, that's insane. Well, that seems he's, like it should be a minus a ability. Apex Predator, man. He's yeah, coming, man. Coming I love that he's... Ya. Yeah, Apex Predator. Yeah, coming to get you. His second plus one, if there's another, no Planeswalkers to wreck, uh, put a 3-3 black uh, beast creature token with Death Touch on the battlefield. What? That's great, too. He's his, making beasts that's have a Death plus Touch? One? Yeah. His third ability, <laughs> minus three, destroy target creature. You gain life equal to its toughness. Wow. I mean, I thought that that would be replaced with the Planeswalker one, but bonk. sure. This card's crazy. And his last one, minus eight, target opponent gets an emblem with whenever a creature attacks you, it gets plus five, plus five, and gains trample until end of turn. Is this the first card that gives another player an emblem? Yes, I think yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> because I've never heard of that before. Yeah, this is just baller. It, it's so awesome. Especially, in, again, in Infect, like, oh my god, black green is where most of the Infect creatures live, so I've got a couple a uh, couple Infect decks that run both black and green, and every one of these effects is amazing in that. He, yeah. He also protects himself, which I always like to see. Like, you could put him out on an empty board, he'll be able to create a 3-3 with Death Touch. You know, he's hard to assault that way. Killing a Planeswalker seems awesome, you know... I don't know. This card seems crazy. And I know yeah. you were talking earlier about how, you know, it's tough to get uh, token decks in black, but the, I've always had a, a Gave, uh, Guru of Spores token deck. It was like the second deck that I ever built. Mm-hmm. This guy with doubling season and then with other tokens, he's just going to be awesome. Yeah. Awesome. He's pretty baller. He seems crazy to me. Yeah, just having four abilities alone makes him are already one of the greatest planeswalkers around. Yeah. I mean, it seems like if you're in those colors, you just put him in there, right? Yep. You I can't would. not. I mean, yeah. I mean, seven, he's he's a bit high for mana cost, but every one of his abilities is super powerful. Yeah, and he comes in that plus, five, too. You plus one him, and he puts in a three, three with death touch. That's pretty strong. Yeah. All right, next is Sliver Hive Lord. This is the... Sliver oh, yeah. Commander we're give, being given. It's a legendary sliver. It costs Wooberg, which is <laughs> white, blue, black, red, green. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Sliver creatures you control have indestructible. Well, seems like the perfect commander for a sliver. Deck. Yep. Yeah. Five for five. Five colors. Makes all your dudes really tough to kill. Yeah. He's like the Avacyn of slivers, um, which is why I hate him, and I hope I don't come across him anytime soon, because that's going to be a pain in the butt to deal he with. He makes me want to build a sliver EDH deck. Of course I he does. Love any, <laughs> I love any commander that lets you play five colors. Yeah. Yeah, And exactly. makes the, all your stuff indestructible, and then with slivers, they're all stacking on top of each other. Yeah. That seems is super fun. For you investors out there, I think a foil version of this card will be worth a lot of money someday. Yeah, hold on to it. Don't trade it. Yeah, don't trade it. He's one of a kind. Uh, sliver, high, what's the the other five color Sliver Commander that everyone wants to play? Sliver Queen or... Yeah, there's a couple, yeah. Right, and those cards are all pretty expensive. Um, so, yeah, this guy's great. I think He's, they just went down in value. Yeah, Probably. just because of, because of how good this <laughs> yeah. is now. Yeah, right. <laughs> but because of how good he is, I mean, you never know. Either way... You still put him in the deck, though. Yeah, exactly. Sliver Absolutely. Queen and the, yeah, yeah, so... All right. All right. Next up, we got Obelisk of Erd. It's a six drop artifact with Convoke. As Obelisk of Erd enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus two, plus two. Goblins, tokens, 
anything. Great. Plus it, two plus two is a lot. Yeah, uh, and it's a with lot. With convoke, it's. It, I think it's worth. It's worth it. Yeah, it's asking for you to use it in the in the token deck, and it's asking you to make those tokens even better than they were before, right? Yep. I think it's also something that uh, in that affinity stuff that we were talking about may be more useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right. The next one is Perilous Vault. It's an artifact for four mana. You tap five mana and the vault. Exile Perilous Vault. Exile all non-land permanents. So Whoa. it's a Navinural's disc. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. With Exile. Yeah. Uh, and you can use it, if you have enough mana, you can use it the same turn you play it. And Navinural's doesn't get rid of Planeswalkers, because mm -hmm. when it was invented, Planeswalkers weren't around yet. Yeah. Um, I think it's a really well-balanced card for the cost, and everything I think it does. So too. It goes in any color deck, and it can exile everything, which is something that's you know only been kind of a white ability before, that uh, this... Actually, I guess kind of in blue, too, but then you had to target and whatnot. Yeah. Exile is really important, I Very think. Very important, yeah. especially with all the indestructible stuff yeah. and, you know, uh, hexproof stuff that they're doing. The fact that they hit, this hits everything and in indestructible stuff. This is a must include in almost every EDH deck, I think. I yeah. think you're right. I think it's something that, uh, you know, you can put it out, leave it there, and then use it when you need it. But if everybody's playing this, that's going to be tough, man. Yeah, yeah. but I mean... <laughs> Yeah, that, on that level, run it kind of sucks. Hate. But right now, most people run the minerals. I mean, yeah, it's true. So, but you have a turn to get rid of that if you you know get the chance. That's true. You don't have if they have nine mana, you don't have a turn to do anything. Yeah, and Nev's disc also. This one, it's all non land permanent. You have to exile it to to yes. have it affect itself. Yes. And Nev's disc, if you can make your stuff indestructible, now you just yeah, true, yeah, true, true. yeah, exactly. True. Uh, next up, we got Phyrexian Revoker. It's a two-drop artifact creature. Uh, two in, it's a two-one. As Phyrexian Revoker enters the battlefield, name a non-land card. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated. So, so it's like a pithing needle, needle yeah. on a uh, on a crab. I don't know what is this thing. This uh, guy's uh, this is a reprint, and uh, yeah. he's basically yeah, like you said, a pithing needle on a on a stick. You know, it's Somebody. just another way to do a pithing needle. Pithing yeah. needle is a good effect to have as in your disruption package. We talked about it before. So this is just going to be easier to get a hold of for a little while here. And yeah, exactly. It's basically usable in almost every EDH deck because there's going to be something, either their commander yeah. or just a prominent card in the deck that you don't want them to be able to like activate the ability. So Yeah, yeah I was it, playing another uh, deck the other day. I think it was you, Jim, that you played a p Pithing Needle against me. Just yeah, yeah. just wrecked me. Yeah, it only wrecked half your commander too, but that was enough. Yeah, yeah sometimes that'll literally just shut their entire deck off and right. until they get rid of the Pithing Needle or the yep. Phyrexian Revoker, like... They can't do anything, so that can just win you the game. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Craig, you want to read it? Nope. Okay. <laughs> so it's the soul of New Phyrexia. It's a six-drop artifact creature that is a six-six with trample. And here is the Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, for five, <laughs> you can pay five, and it says permanence you control gain indestructible until end of turn. And you can also do it from your graveyard by exiling the card for five as well. Uh, this is the anti-board wipe. It was worth the wait. It was worth the wait. It's definitely the best of the souls, I think. Um, I think this has a place in a lot of BDH decks, not all of them. But if you can't run Avacyn, this is not really a bad alternative, you know? Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive. You're going to have to keep five mana available. Still, like, those are prices you're willing to pay yeah. just to avoid a lot of board wipes. Not all of yeah. them, but a lot of them. And if you see a Nev's Disc hit the board, you know, then you know you have a turn potentially, so you can just leave five up and things will be okay. Or if it's right. your Nev's Disc, hey, yeah. who knows? Yeah. yeah, in a token deck, in the Flicker deck, in a whole bunch of decks that just have a, a, quite a few creatures they want yeah, on exactly. the board to stay alive, this is pretty powerful. Absolutely. This and Nev's Disc is awesome, as well as I'm, I'm happy that they did this in colorless instead of in five colors. Oh, because they yes, definitely, definitely could have done that yeah. in a five-color. Yeah. Color yeah. And now it's available goodness. to every EDH deck, and I think it's going to go in a lot of them. I think yeah. so, too. Okay, the next card we were talking about earlier, it's called the Chain Veil. It's a legendary artifact for four mana. Yes. Nice. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't activate a loyalty ability of a Planeswalker this turn, you lose two life. So that's bad. You can pay four and tap it. And it says, for each Planeswalker you control, you may activate one of his loyal one of its loyalty abilities once this turn, as though none of its loyalty abilities had been activated this turn. Whoa. So that's the combo you were talking about. It basically makes all your Planeswalkers for four mana be able to do something twice. Yeah, and that's amazing. And they don't have to do the same thing either. They could do a different thing. Yeah, exactly. It's like giving them two turns instead of one for four mana. Dude, that's crazy. 
crazy. Yeah, that really is crazy. And the art's great, too. You can definitely see the planeswalker symbol, if you turn it upside down, is hidden in the uh, the veil of the chain. Yeah, what I love is that you can mask. plus one and then use their minus ability and still end up a little bit ahead of where, oh, where they were at. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, it, it's This is just great. You know, it, with Liliana being able to tutor and make someone discard the card, like, that's card advantage. Liliana can tutor up the chain veil for you. Yeah. Huh? Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just need to be able to untap the chain veil, and then you can get some pretty crazy loops going. I think there's going to be a lot of ways to abuse this. Yeah. This there... card seems crazy broken. I bet there's going to be a whole bunch of, like, Planeswalker-based infinite crap you can do that's going to just be nuts. I think it'll make Planeswalkers more viable in this format. Because, yeah. I mean, let's face it, Planeswalkers are typically underpowered. And Wizards has known this for a while, and they've been trying to remedy this situation, which I think is why they've introduced so many new Planeswalkers in this set. And also this this artifact that affects Planeswalkers. Um, I yeah, bet I you could it, do an all Planeswalker deck now, EDH deck. I think uh, it, we're getting just, closer to that point yeah. for sure. You'd have to be able to sort of reliably go find this Chain Veil or uh, mm -hmm. or the Ajani Steadfast. Those are the two I think right now that are affecting your other Planeswalkers and sort of yeah, definitely. The, you need like Anthem effects for your Planeswalkers right now to make them like viable. But I think yeah, you're right. We're, yeah, we're sort of moving towards that. We're we're into Planeswalker synergy now. Yeah. like yeah. that's that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. Uh, next up is a very exciting reprint. It is Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth. Uh, yeah. Each land you control is a swamp in addition to its other types. It's a legendary land. It's a legendary land. This is a $40 card, no longer. Um, it was printed in from the Vault Realms. It suggests Mono Black needs this. This is... Yeah, this and... This uh, hoses decks. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. There's and, some uh, combos with this thing, too, that... Cabal Coffers. Mm -hmm. Cabal Coffers, yeah. Urborg, Tomb of, y Tomb of Yawgmoth. Magus of the Coffers. I love you know, this thing. Cabal Coffers on a stick, on a 3-3 uh, three, three or a 4-4 four, four creature. Yeah. Yeah, go look up all the combos for this thing. You're going to be able to get a hold of it now, where it was really expensive before... Uh, and there's some busted stuff you can do in EDH, so put that into your decks. Yeah, definitely. And there's something else that I want to talk about before uh, with the lands that are being reprinted in the set. Mm -hmm. I think some of these lands, the uh, the dual color that deal one damage to you for either color, are some of the best lands for EDH. And the reason why is that they come in untapped, they tap for a colorless, all of them, and you can choose when to use them for the color, and it's only dealing one out of your 40 damage to you. And I think, you know, for mana fixing, especially for, you know, people who are just getting into the game, you know, they're not shock lands, they're not, you know, forests and swamps in addition to their, you know, whatever. But they're, they're strong enough where they come into play untapped, they're better mm -hmm. than a gate, they can tap for, for colored mana if you need it, um, and otherwise they, they tap for colorless mana. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a really good point, because what, you know, you put it out on early turns, you use the colored portion of it, but later on when you've drawn other lands... Now you're just tapping them for colorless and they're not mm -hmm. continuing to do damage to you. So right. yeah. that's a really good point in that they're going to be cheap uh, to get a hold of. And and lands are typically like some of the most expensive parts of your deck if you really want to make your deck work. And that's not an exciting way to spend your magic dollars, right. you know, to, to buy lands. So but most it's, people it's well of, worth it, though. It is, but most people skimp on it. And I understand mm -hmm. it. It's like it's way more fun to buy to spend money on, on a dragon card or something that's just splashy and fun and it's going to come out and do stuff than it is to be like, Oh, I get my red mana more consistently. Like that's yeah. just. But as something that some of our more experienced players know, the the mana fixing yes. is makes it so much more uh, just consistent, and that consistency over so many games um, is the reason why those lands are so expensive. Yeah. So don't be shy. I mean, don't be hesitant to put in the shock lands, in, or sorry, not shock lands, the pain lands into your deck, because like uh, like Craig said. You know, you're only going to take a couple damage from them. Eventually, yep. you're just going to start tapping them for the colorless part of your spell cost. Yeah, and in the three color deck, uh, you're only going to be able to put two of these in anyway. And you're really just trying to find as many lands that have the ability to help you splash different colors across the whole board. So, you know, uh, Yamavawa Coast, where you're only going to put two in each of your decks, you're really not going to get hurt that much from it, more than like a, a shock land or anything. So it's definitely worth it. It's the cheapest, I think the cheapest option, one of the best and cheapest options for a good dual land. Yeah, especially for well, especially since it's gonna be a new set that's just coming out. Like, exactly, there, there's gonna be a lot of them out there. Yeah, so. and if you're gonna pick them up at a price, I'd say wait until M15 has been opened a bunch, and there are lots more of these floating around the market. You'll be able to find them real cheap. And these are, you know, it's like their fourth reprint on them too. Or they're, they're not expensive reprint. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're like three dollars a piece. Yeah, yeah. The, some of them, the red blue, the green blue, I think are the two most expensive, and maybe white red. Um, yeah, yeah, because that's a red blue is uh, always expensive. 
red red white is an archetype that doesn't care about taking the damage because they're going to kill you first yeah exactly yeah all right so that's going to wrap up our m15 review nice Oof, we got through a lot of cards today huh yeah we did uh, we, it's becoming a habit we're making i was just about to say we're making a a a, a, a thing out of it aren't we surprisingly easier than i thought it was gonna be oh there you go yeah <laughs> there you go. see yeah, there you're there just go. talking about what you love magic of the gathering yeah. so once again uh check out craig's web series uh top decking um webisodesnetwork.com or youtube webisodes network channel and check them out on twitter at webisodes net nice or at top decking but yeah craig thanks so much for coming on your yeah, expertise craig. is always valuable thanks um, for having me guys yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say, Craig, you've, you've definitely taught me, uh, you and Josh have taught me the most about strategy and EDH and Commander so far, so I appreciate all your advice. So hopefully we'll have you back soon to talk I more I don't strategy. appreciate it, you kicking my ass, but the, the, yeah. all the other stuff we appreciate. Oh, please. Yeah, Craig, the next time I die to infect, I may just stop talking to you. <laughs> jo so. Josh is definitely the uh, one of the better players that uh, we've started playing against, and Jim, it's uh, been a pleasure playing with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it as Jimmy the Red. Okay, so be sure to tune in next episode where we have Gavin Verhey from Wizard of the Coast, uh, the aforementioned, and uh, it's going to be awesome. There's going to be a lot of new stuff. So Yeah, basically stuff that you want to hear about cons it's our Kira Commander 2015 and From the Vault Annihilation and some Shop Talk. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something snarky or funny to say at the end, Jimmy. What do you got? I don't know. I hope you guys go out and play M15 because guess what? It only comes around once a year. Uh, um, yeah, boy. And grab some more Conspiracy while you can too. Yes, exactly. Uh, even if you're just sitting on the box, they may be cheap now. They may be getting a, only a little bit cheaper, I think. But right now is the time to buy a box and just sit on it. Why not? Have fun with your friends two years from now when everyone's like, oh my gosh, remember Conspiracy? And be like, guess what? Yeah, if I you guys find any uh, any good uh, combos for sets with Conspiracy, we'd love to hear about it. Yes, definitely. What's your favorite card you've added in through Lore Seeker? Please post it in the comments. All right, guys, until next time. Adios. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com. Or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>